Le Mokoba, et Zudala, Yakodala Mastaku, Ayagaba, Ayagaba, et Dala Mastaku, Agabakoba, Arubade, Arabadea, Arabade, et Rubadea, Yako de le Mosodi, et Namasodi and Agabagabagaba. We are not looking for the devil, but if he shows up, Yako Brande le Mosodi, et Zodin Trouble, Yako Brande le Mosodi. Yagabagada la brure de mou, ande le mostaku, ande le mostaku, agabagabagada la brure de mou sodi, ande le mostaku, ande le mou, ye cobre de la mou sodi, arabadea, arabadea, yako de la mou sodi, arubacaba, ando le mou sodi, e gabagabagada la, arabadea du, ando le mostadi ande, we come against every fear, yako de la mou sodi, fear is a torment. Il y a des lèmes qui ont 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 des lèmes qui
pastor Tokwe Hope, evangelist. He is the first person that is going to minister to us this morning. So uh, let's have our seats in the presence of the Lord. Are we, is he on? Can you bring him up, please? Okay, evangelist Tokwe. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you, mommy. Thank Good you. morning, ma. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Um, Thank you. Evangelist Temitokwe Success and your daily is the global leader, Prayer Revolution Network, a ministry based in South Africa and globally impacting lives. He's also a businessman alongside his wife in the person of Mrs. Juliet Omoto Vie Ayodele. They are blessed with three children, Alpha, Treasure, and Sharon. Please, with um, a, a, a sounding ovation, help me to welcome Evangelist Semitokwe Success. You are welcome. Sir. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Daddy, for such an opportunity to be a blessing to God's people. Hallelujah. It is an honor to give back. You know, it's a time, you know, an honor to give back, you know, to uh, 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 where uh, we started. Hallelujah. I want to deeply appreciate God. And uh, after prayer, I'm going to, you know, take up because of uh, the time schedule. Let's pray very quickly. Father, we are grateful to you for such an honor and for this conference. Thank you for what you have set to do and thank you for what you have started in the life of your people and thank you, oh God, because you have a mind before you stage this conference to reach out to many. Lord, we bless you. Holy Spirit, this morning we pray you will bless us that you transform us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Daddy, thank you so much. A minute, Pastor. I, I will start by you. thanking Daddy and Mommy. Page 31 on your manual. That's Hallelujah. From. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, Pastor. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. I will start all over by thanking daddy and mommy over and again. You know, no matter, uh, you know, where uh, you are and how far you want to go in this life, there must be somebody who will take you by the hand, by your hand, and keep pulling you and keep pulling you, you know, until you rise. And, you know, you attain, you know, your destiny. And that is whom God, that, whom uh, mommy and daddy, you know, are to us in city welfare. And I want to thank him specially. I want to thank daddy. I want to thank mommy. You know, the journey started back while I was in Futa. In 2006, 2006, I came to Futa for pre-degree. 2007, you know, the journey continued and all of that. And when I was in year two, I started a prayer ministry and, you know, I consulted daddy. Daddy was part of, you know, the major, major inspiration behind that ministry, you know, that I'm still running it today. Hallelujah. You, if you know Futa very well, for those of us in Futa and in Akure and Futa Evaron, there is a month, there's a place they call Futa Mountain, you know, close to UBA, I'm not sure if the UBA is still there, but I'm sure that that mountain where we used to pray is still there inside Puta. I will got, you know, I used to gather people there and daddy will call. He never mind, he never despised to say, oh no, I, I, I can't join you there. Daddy has always been an inspiration. In fact, I will say it publicly and boldly here that my life is a replica example of daddy and mommy's life. Hallelujah. My life 
is a, a total and pure replica of daddy and mommy's uh, life. Hallelujah. One, God bless them with three children. We are also blessed with three children. Two boys and a girl, you know, in our own kids. I think that this case is uh, uh, two girls and, you know, a, 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 a man is growing to become a man now by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And I had in mind that my wife is going to pursue her education to a very higher degree because she was so uh, uh, attacked in that direction. And when I met daddy, mommy became a, 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 a you know, a sure example, you know, in the academic field. Today, I married my wife as an undergraduate. And in fact, it looked impossible that she was not going to have a first degree. But to the glory of God, today, she's pursuing a PhD, you know, in South Africa here, to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So uh, when I tell you that, you know, their lives combined together has been a replica you know, of the destiny we are looking up to and we are fulfilling, you know, is not out of order to the glory of God. I've been giving a topic to minister, and very briefly because of time, I'm going to be speaking on the topic. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Hallelujah. I, I you know, in the manual you will see, I wrote, God has never promised us a safe, a smooth sailing, but he has promised us a safe landing. God has never promised us a smooth sailing, but he has promised us a safe landing. John 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. That is the spirit that he implanted in me, and that is the spirit, you know, of God's word that I'm operating with. When I came to South Africa, you know, right from the, you know, when I was in the air, you know, when I was flying, God told me, when you land in that country, start a hundred day fasting and prayer, you know, just to commence your assignment there. And that was, you know, what I started. You know, that was how I started exactly. Amen. If you are close to daddy, one thing that is sure is that you will learn and understand God for yourself. You cannot, you can't stay around daddy and you'll be deceived, you know, by fake prophet, fake teachers, or fake apostle or bishop, or, you know, it's, it, that is impossible, clearly. Hallelujah. And I'm going to stand there and thank Daddy sincerely. You know, Daddy we always say, you can tell you about jail, you man before. And I thank God, you know, for things and the word of God he implanted in all of us, you know, that are standing globally today, all over the world, all over the nations of the world. I thank God for things and the word of God that he implanted in us, you know, that, that, that is making us a, you know, a different, a total different in our time and in our generation. Hallelujah. When I landed, okay, let, 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 me, let me go back to before I left. The last message I heard from your mouth, Daddy, is learn to live with sinner without sinning. If I didn't hear such word, you will only hear a negative report of me and a negative report, report of my ministry. Because I came to a nation, you know, where, you know, sin is very simple and sin is very easy. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to make hard effort in order to sin here, well, you know. So, daddy was teaching seriously on that topic. Learn to live with sinners without sinning, without sinning. I heard on so much with that word. And it has, you know, it really helped me and still helping me till now. I know a fellow pastor colleague, you know, whom because of the fact, you no, know, we are in a, in a nation where, you know, women are, 
are free. Whatever you want to do with the women, you can easily mess around and all of that. I have some of my colleagues and friends, you know, who took to that path and they are in the grave today. Uh, you know, persons are uh, people who are very, very close to me, who are no more, you know, they got here, they forgot primarily, you know, their assignment uh, and they venture into sin and they mess their destiny totally and they are no more. There are those who are still existing, but who are struggling. You know, a Christian life is no longer part of them. So I'm sincerely and openly thanking God, you know, and I'm saying it, that Daddy, thank you for that message. Perhaps I didn't hear that message, it would have been a mess for me. It would have been a total mess, but I glorify God. Now, go back, I'm going back to the message. He said, in this world, you are going to have challenges. In the place of your assignment, there are going to be challenges. Wherever you go, whatever area of endeavor you choose, there are going to be challenges, for sure. You know, in the academics, mommy is standing there, she can tell. So many challenges she confronted, you know, why, you know, she was there. Hallelujah. In ministry, there are challenges. So when Jesus was telling the disciples to say, in the world we are going to have challenges, uh, troubles, you know, he knew what exactly he was talking about. But he gave a reassuring word. He said, never allow your heart to be troubled. You know, he said, I have overcome the world. And that is the spirit. That is the winning attitude. That is, you know, the grace we have been imparted with. That no matter the number of troubles or confrontations or, you know, challenges we come across in this world or in our place of environment or in our assignment, be rest assured that victory is certain because we are working and operating from already won battle, already fought battle and already won battle. We are operating from a place of victory. We are not fighting the world as those who are beating the head, but we have conquered the world because the spirit of him that is Jesus from the dead lives in us. And then we carry his presence, we live by his word, and that is, uh, you know, the sustainability that we have. Hallelujah. Let me go further. Tough time don't last. In my place of assignment and in my little space of time, I've had my whole portion. It got to a time I was sleeping in a public toilet because I had no money to rent a place, I had no place to, 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 to stay, you know. I was, you know, despised and decided by, you know, other colleagues, friends, and all of that. I took to the street. There was a time I was sleeping in a public toilet inside the mall. There was another time in winter I was sleeping under a tree. But I keep on calling daddy. I was expecting that daddy would say, come back home. If that place is not working out, come back. But daddy, you know, we always encourage. At some point, we just met away whatever you think is the trouble in, in your heart. Daddy will say, I'm telling you, those words, you know, they carried me, they are still carrying me to now. Hallelujah. Despite all the challenges, I made up my mind. You know, I have been imparted with the grace. Daddy personally admitted me into ministry in 2014. So I know I carry a grace. And I have a father who has never come back to us to say, sons, daughters, see the reason why he didn't work. The spirit to make it work lives in us, and I was operating with that spirit, and still operating with that spirit till now. And I give all the glory to God that I didn't give up. My wife and children were back home in Nigeria. Daddy was looking after them, taking care of them, you know, till God finally arranged, and they joined me. I never gave up. I made up my mind, you know, that no, this is a tough season, but I'm not going to die in this season. I'm going to outlast this season. And that is 
exactly what happened to the glory of God. The same man who lived in public toilet inside, you know, a, 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 a mall, is the same me who slept under the tree, you know, uh, in the open inside winter uh, during winter season. The same mean we are living in a duplex apartment that was gifted to us, bought completely and gifted to us to the glory of God. We are living in a free house. Thank God I didn't give up. Today, we are driving two cars to the glory of God. None of those two cars were bought with our money. We didn't buy any of the car with our personal money. Hallelujah. We were gifted. But thank God that we, we had, you know, leaders and mentors we could look up to who challenged our faith and who encouraged us not to give up. You know, Apostle Paul, we always say, I am who I am today by the grace of God. I am who I am by the grace of God. So let no man boast of anything. I, if there is anything I'm doing, I'm not being boastful. I'm only giving thanks to God. Thus far, he has helped us and still helping us. You know, because we were imparted with such a grace. Hallelujah. One of the things that was on my mind in those times is that how do I tell my spiritual father that I failed? How do I tell him, you know, that I, I didn't succeed? If there is anything that he loves so much, if he sends you on an error, you don't, daddy doesn't like that you come back to him to come and explain why you couldn't achieve your aim or the objective or the assignment with which he sent you. Rather, even if it will cost you to borrow money, if it will cost you to go extra mile, do it and thereafter come and tell him. He will surely refund you. That I know. So the, there is no excuse for failure when you stay around daddy. He's one of the spirits that keep you know that kept me and still keeping us as a family till today. Hallelujah. I'm testifying to the glory of God. Tough season don't last, but tough people do. Now, I'm going to jump. I said, whose you are, whose you are is greater than who you are anywhere and any day. Whose you are is greater than who you are. Hallelujah. You are of the Lord. You are sent by the Lord. If there is anything I kept reminding God in those times until now, is that God, you sent me. You sent my father. And so also you sent me. I am, you know, I am sent by you. You know, you said go. You are the I am that I am. And you have given me the backing. And to the glory of God, the one who called, the one who sent us, is still backing us by his power and by his authority. Hallelujah. To the glory of his name. To the glory of his name. We give him all the glory and we return all the glory back to him. Now, something happened while I was on the street in Pretoria, South Africa one day. I saw a diplomat from which country I don't know. But right in my presence, you know, there were some street kids who were trying to terrorize him. Then he stopped his car, he took out his gun, and he shot them. He shot one of them, and obviously, that guy was dead. And right there, he stood. He was not with any security. He stood and he called the police. He called the police to come and take, you know, to come and take care of the cops. I was so shocked. Since that day till now, if I'm driving close to a diplomat, I near, you know, I dare not go too close because of what happened that day. You know, why? He did that because it's not just a person standing there. A diplomat standing there is a whole nation. He has been sent by his nation to do whatever he is doing in South Africa. So if you are terrorizing him, you are terrorizing a whole nation that sent him. And I believe so much that that was the consciousness that was done on him that made him to shoot that guy. Say no, if I kill him, it's not just me who killed him. A whole nation has killed him. And so if they are going to attack 
they are going to attack a whole nation, not just him. Hallelujah. Who you are is more powerful than who you are. If he's going to operate as a person, it's going to be a big trouble for him, daddy. But he stood. I was so, so, I was so perturbed when he called the police. He keyed with his gun. And he had the audacity to call the police to come and take care of the cops. Hallelujah. Who you have is very powerful. Don't joke with it. You are of the Lord. No matter where you are throughout the world, you are of the Lord. Operate that mindset and operate with that grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a sister hearing me now. You are still schooling in Futa. You are schooling. You are so spiritually endowed, so spiritually inclined, that God has spoken to you so much. How much is going to use you in your future? But there is a brother, you know, that you are dating right now. It's not the right man for you. God sent me to tell you, you are dating trouble. You are if you perhaps you eventually marry that brother, you will, you, will, you will succeed in marrying trouble. So God has been warning you and is asking me to warn you now that that is not a man for you. Run away from him. It's not a man for your life. Take it and take it seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whose you are is very powerful in the journey and in the race of life. Hallelujah. Now, because of time, you know, I, I, I'm trying to rush. You know, I'm trying to rush. Remember, always, you are going through life. Jesus has gone through life. Matthew 20, 28, 20. You know, Jesus has gone through life. And his promise is that, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Jesus is with you always. Carry that co consciousness in you. Carry that mindset. He is with you always. Just the way, you know, mommy and daddy of Bundare is with us. You know, he is with you always. See, now I can wake daddy middle of the night. I can call him anytime. Why? He's my father. He's my father. He is with you always. God is with you always. Hallelujah. If you are going to outlast your tough season, I say carry God along and his presence. Never joke with his word. Very, very important. Very, very important. Hallelujah. I wrote here, you know, in closing. In toughness of time, dry season, cold, winter, and summer, be God is with you always. Not sometimes, not occasionally, but all the time. God is with you, always. Listen to uh, uh, this word in Romans 8 verse 18, as I close right now, because of our time. Hallelujah. He said, I consider that our present suffering, suffering is, is are not, are not worth comparing with the, with the glory, glory that will, that will be revealed in us. In us. Look at, look at you, you. look at look. There are some things you are going through right now. You wish you never go through them. There are some trouble and challenges of life you have gone through. And you look back. And you know, you look, you check where you are and you look back. You wish you never, you know, gone through those things. Sisters, brethren, men, women, let me tell you. Part of the reason why you are where you are Part of the reason you are enjoying the blessing you are enjoying today is as a result of those, you know, challenges, of those trouble, trouble, or those toughness of time that you are going through. There is a glory that will be revealed after this season of challenges, after this trying time, after this, you know, uh, whatever you call it, or this up and down. There's a glory that will be revealed afterwards. Don't give up in this trying time. Don't give up in this, you know, tough time. There's a glory that is coming thereafter. There is a glory that is coming thereafter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see Daddy Amoni Ogundare 
Everywhere you go, I see white men, I see white people welcoming daddy and mommy globally in the nations of the heart. I see daddy and mommy, you know, being welcomed by white. Oh, glory to God. There's a brother in place of your assignment. You have been wondering, is God no more with you? God is with you. You have a document challenge right now where you are. And you are wondering if it's ever going to work out. God is sending me to tell you, he says it's going to work out. You are going to come out victorious. Your testimony is, you know, part of the testimony that is going to, you know, bring many to Christ around you. And dear this time, endure this time, endure this time. It will not last forever. It will not last forever. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I want you to be speaking in tongues right now. I want you to start praying right where you are as I bring you to a close because of the time, you know, that have been allotted. I want you to start praying. If I have not been able to speak much, I know that the Holy Ghost has sent a message across to you. I know that there is an inspiration, you know, that has been revealed into you. When I was praying, God revealed to me that so one of the reasons, one of the things he wants to do in this conference is that he wants to realign destiny, you know, he want to readjust, want to bring a readjustment uh, to some destiny, want to bring a realignment, uh, you know, to to, to, uh, to some destiny, because there are some people uh, who are hearing me right now, uh, who are almost going out of the way, uh, you know, you are almost facing the other direction, uh, but I want you to ask for his help, uh, I want you to ask him, Holy Spirit, help me, uh, help me that I will not fail you, uh, help me uh, that I will never give Give up. In, oh God, in this tough time, I know that your spirit is able. I know that you are more than able to carry me through. I want you to pray where you are and say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God, for the next season and this season of life that I'm going through. Lord, help me now. I will not give up because, oh God, of what I'm going through right now. I know that there is a glory that will be revealed after now in me and through me in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God as I hand over back to mommy. Oh, I know we have been blessed. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Daddy. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, and thank you to all brethren for this privilege. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you tremendously. We are Amen. so grateful to God. Has anybody Amen. been blessed? You know, different messages are for different people. I don't know somebody who is uh, passing through tough times. He has given us his own experience in South Africa, but people in different countries are having tough times. You may be in Nigeria and you are passing through some times. It's like tough times, but tough times don't last. Tough people. Do. This scripture came to my hand. Let's go to this scripture. I just want to corroborate what Pastor said. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. I want to read it in other translations. He said, for which cause we faint not. This faint, St. Mm. says, we do not lose heart. For this cause, we do not lose heart. There is a reason why you will not lose heart. When others are passing through things, Amen. Amen. Even, especially in Nigeria now, we have, you know, tough times. People are, but there is a reason why you will not lose heart. You are saying something. There is, okay. Um, Second Corinthians 4 verse 16. There is, if you don't have a reason not to lose heart, you will lose heart when tough times come. But Apostle Paul was passing through something. He said, for this cause, we faint not. We should have fainted. The things that have bombarded us, we should have fainted. But for this cause, there must be a cause. Why you did. There is a reason why Jesus did not faint when he was carrying the cross and God, because he was going to the cross. And at that cross, he saw you and I that would be born again. Many sons will come unto God. And so he was encouraged. He could go to the cross. He could go through it. The, and that cost must be for the cause of the gospel. That cost must be for the reason of Jesus. Why you will not faint. If just for your own self, boy, you are going to faint. Because how many people commit suicide? But a child of God with purpose, you can not. You can never.
never. Why? Because there will be only Apostle Paul. He said, for this cause, ha, we should have. That's I'm reading it. I'm interpreting. For this cause, we 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 faint not. Otherwise, if the, this cause had not been there, otherwise we would have fainted because the things have been thrown against us. Not we faint not, but though our outward man perish, different things happen to people. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. That's tough times that don't last. Whatever you see, they are temporal. Whatever we don't see, they are eternal. What has God spoken through you? Wait for you. When you are going through tough times, you are going through things. What has God told you before that time? Hold on to it. For that cause, you will faint not. You see, for this light affliction is what? But for a moment. And it's going to work for us. Exceeding weight of glory. So, tie anything you are going and your life and everything. Tie it onto the gospel. Tie it onto the cause of God. Because of that cause, you will not faint. No matter what is happening, you are going to come on top of it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. We are so grateful. We've been blessed tremendously by that sharing. Ah, thank you, sir. God bless you. We have our next minister, uh, Mrs. Oladoni Ayodele. Please help me to check that um, something. We wrote Oluwa Dunia your daily. It was after that I saw him. Ah, how did we write Oluwa Dunia? Please, can you bring her up? Can you bring uh, Mrs. Ayodele up, please? Our dear media people. I think she's she's um, she's ready. So let me continue. Uh, please, when you go, what page is it? Please, what page? Okay, go to page 34. You can just correct that name there. It's all I do on this. No, I began to see. It was after we printed this. I was telling Brooklyn, I said, ah, how did we come to write Oluwa Duni? Our ah, name is not Oluwa Duni. Nah, it's all I do on it. But uh, whichever one, we shall know his, her name is Duni. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's bring her up. Yes, Sister Ola Duni Ayodele. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I want to introduce uh, Mrs. Ayodele to us. Mrs. Oladoni Ayodele is a daughter in the ministry for about 15 years now. She's currently in South Africa to pursue a PhD degree. She's married to Ayodele Olumide. Their union is blessed with two beautiful daughters. You know, there are some people, they just make their introduction to be so small. And I say I can give it expansion, you know. I can help them to expand, like I helped uh, Engineer Soji to expand a little bit. I want to help uh, Mrs. Ayodele to expand a little bit, you know. You know, she said for 15 years. And uh, when you see, uh, that is not frivolous. When you see that you um, bring people up here, there is uh, a purpose, a reason. And uh, the people that are ministers, they are sons and daughters. And they have served in this kingdom. I mean, they have served in the kingdom of God. They have served in this house. Mrs. Ayodele is, um, she has served in this house. I can't begin to say uh, things about her so that I will not uh, be as if I'm flattering. I'm not flattering, you know. Uh, our girls, the twins, they are now uh, ladies, you know. She was when they were here, she would stay with them. She would take care of them. She would. We were literally together in the house. And at times, Daddy would have traveled. It is me, Mr. Yodele, and the twins that would be in the house. And of course, at times we, we laugh. At times we talk together. At times we 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 could share, you know, and then we resolve it. And but all through, you know, that's that's what you can't be staying with people and everything is all fine, fine. It's it's a lie. You are deceiving yourself. Even in family, at times you have fracas. Ah, ah, what, what? And then you you make that is what is making everything to you know everything is going to be sweet. But by the time you say okay, you say I mean it's all right. You come and say daddy, I want to go to drink. It's okay, go. Daddy, I want to go to party. It's okay, go. Daddy, I want to go to church. It's okay, go. And nothing, uh-uh. No, you know something is wrong. 
<laughs> you know, daddy wants to say something. You know, something is wrong. When he said, daddy, I want to, ah, what do you mean? No, 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 no. What, what is in this house? Ah, oh, no, me, me too. I don't want to. Ah, okay, no, now let's, so, okay. And then everything is there, uh, you know. And so I want to thank God for his life. Not only that, she's, uh, she's seasoned. You know, God, she has, God himself has trained her. And I believe that, you, you know, I told you every minister has something that God has sent them. You know, it's not the, the physique. It's not that I'm a female, so I am uh, speaking f- feminism. This is not feminism. It's the spirit. What has God sent each person for? And I know that you have been blessed by each person that has come online and even on ground to come and teach. You know, everybody has come with the measure of grace that God has given them and delivered something you know, to us. And I believe this morning is not going to be different. It's going to, there will be a deliverance of something that God has put in our spirit to everyone here in the name of Jesus. I know so many of us, we know her. Some people, we don't know her. That's why we are introducing her. And uh, she's an academia. She's pursuing PhD. And after that, she will become a professor. And after that, and after that. But, um, you know, but, um, um, you know, I was saying yesterday that first of all, be a Christian, be the purpose of God for you, a minister, and then all those other ones you are adding them to him. Because when you go there <laughs> and your born againism and Christianity and uh, whatever is shaky, now please, you heard Pastor Ayodele that said that you don't need to, they will beg you with uh, sin. You don't need to try to say, ah, oh, you are looking for sin to go. What sin? Oh, need it. Oh, boy, I need to buy that. You know, and so you need to be cooked before you go. And these are people that God has cooked and sent out and they are in the earth. And what, by the Spirit of God, what is happening there so that we can be blessed and especially people that will be going out to, that will be uh, uh, disguised apostles in the marketplace and yet carrying the fire of God. God bless you. Over to you, Mrs. Sayodili. God bless you. Good morning, mommy. Good morning, daddy. I hope you are hearing me. We are hearing you. Okay. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy, for this awesome privilege. I'm not taking it for granted. You know when Mommy told me about this meeting and said uh, that it's going to be a conference and I'll be talk- I'll be part of the people talking. I was I was shocked because first I've not heard about the conference because I was I have not read the message on the group and. Secondly, I was like, why, why me, why me? Like, it was, uh, it was, it was, there is this awesomeness, there is all of God that I felt and I, I, and I've always, I've, I've been carrying since that time because I don't know why God wanted me to be part of the people speaking here at this time because I know it has to be a reason and, and it was, it was, it was, it was a great day for me. And I want to thank Daddy for believing so much in what God is doing in my life. And f- thank you, Mommy, too, for the labor of love that you have deposited, you have put through all these years over us. I want to say I am grateful. I'm thankful. I really want to thank you. And like the topic given to me because of time. A woman among the nation. Let's just say what some word of prayer before I go into you. By the time I am talking about this topic, I will have to talk about one or two experiences I had with daddy and mommy why I was in Nigeria and I'm still having with them. So but let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this privilege you have so Lord Holy Spirit that you man to upon me and help me to speak as a oracle in the name of Jesus. Let the word of my mouth come as a harrow in the heart of everyone that you have sent me to this morning. And let your name be glorified. And at the end of today, let us have every cause to give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So the text I picked is from Psalm, Psalm 68, verse 11. If you have your manual there, Psalm 68, verse 11. Psalm 68, verse 11. The Lord gave the word. And great was the company of the those that published, that published it. Kings, Kings of armies did flee apace, and she that tarried at home divided his. You know, I didn't include that two of before, but what I was reading is, and I looked at it, 
said, Kings of Army did flee her pace, and she, she that, that carried that tone divided, divided the spot. And it just dawned on me that whatever, whatever we are now, whatever, whatever we are doing, whatever we see as manifestations of prophecies and everything God is doing through us as sons and daughters in the ministry, it's just that we are privileged to to be part of people dividing the spoils of some other people's labor. Daddy and mommy had labored in the calling, in anointing, in uh, over our lives, over years. And it looked as though they were just giving, 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 and there's no much coming like that at some stage in the ministry. But we are here now. Different sons outside the country, in different continents, and in different places, making waves, making impacts, and finding things easier. Not because it's cheap. It's because we have been called to a fellowship. And that fellowship has given us the access into dividing spoils of what we didn't really, really work for. We didn't really labor for them because some people had gone ahead of us. It's when we are talking about that day and what he has done, it's not as if we are trying to uh, find their head go. There is nothing to find. It's just the obvious truth. We have stayed over years and the workings of God, the dealings of God, the labor they have put in us is what has set us thus far. And I want to really thank God for that labor of, over us. Like I said in the lesson, I said one of the take home, one of the things that we must know as a woman that, want, that God wants to send to nations is that God does not use us. God does not really come with anyone based on our gender. If you are a male or female, God does not see that. God, in fact, God sent us here, put us in the frame that we are in because of the assignment he has given us to do, to fulfill on earth. So as a woman, there is a purpose of God. It's not about your sex or your gender. It's about what God, God wants to do through you and in you. Daddy will always tell us, there is no female Holy Ghost. There is no female anointing. You are not a woman sent to women. You know, I've, I've always seen that uh, a woman now um, got to speak. It's not really, a, it's not, I know some people are sent to women folks, of course. But this, what we are talking about here, uh, it's not like a woman sent to women to become anti feminism or whatever. We are sent on assignment. And you can be sent to men. In fact, you can find out that people you work from, they might be men, boys, girls, it can be can be mixed. So it depends on what God has sent you with and what God is telling us to do. You know, I met Daddy as a young believer. I was I was really just a year in the Lord. I got born again at part two. Like, you know, as Daddy Soji was talking about some of us that we were born with minus, minus. In fact, me, we were born with minus, minus. It's not just minus. It's minus, 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 and minus. We inherited minus. We now added our own minus to it before we came to the Lord. So it was not just uh, uh, we came from. Uh, no, we didn't meet anything on ground. Like when it comes to heritage in God or anything about that. But why we? That, and, and, and I think that's why one of the reasons why God brought us to that. Some of us like that because we don't know. We don't have anything. In fact, we have deficits. They say low and left. Like, we have a lot going on. And God is just looking at how will I help this person? How will I help her life? And then God just drop you with that dear and say, okay, my belly. <laughs> and see, that, that was I. Ah, so it was it was intense. Uh, uh, what we are coming from is so deep. It's so, it's so, it's, it's so, we have a lot of baggages like, and all that. And then for me, I, and when I came to that day, I was just barely a year in the Lord. I just got born again. And like some people will say, I was praying and then the Lord Spirit led me to that day. My own case was not like that. I was just a young believer in the fellowship. Some brethren that God will just use for me just felt, we have a place where we always pray. Sister, we found out that we just gave, you just gave your life to Christ. Can you be following us to the place? And I said, okay, oh. Okay, no problem. And I just came to that day. Based on that, it wasn't as if God told me anything as if I was late. I wasn't at the initial like that. 
for a brother that was just taking us up to fellowship, invited me and said, just come to this place, go and meet, but you must first see him first before you come to the meeting. So and then I came. And you see, as, as, as naive as I was, I was telling God, ah, if you don't want me to be there, let me not meet that man at home oh, and all that. And the first day I came, I didn't meet that day at home. I was thinking it was a sign. And then, but when I got back home, the Holy Ghost just said, go back there again. So this is now God now taking, I said, go back there, go and check him again. So I went again and I met daddy at home and then, and I told him, daddy, I want to be joining the prayer meeting. And the first thing he said, like, ah, you're just a new believer. He was looking at me somehow. And then he said, okay, I should, maybe you get back to me or something. And then later on, he was saying, he didn't want to take me because he was thinking, oh my, you are born again. He called you the discipleship class. So go for discipleship class in a, a fellowship and let them be bringing you up. I don't have time for this. He said, but the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, take her up. And that was how I came into the and when I came, when I started then, coming for early mornings, five to seven, those days. And then daddy would tell us one of the day, I just joined then, and then we are going for maybe 24 hours praying. Eh? I was one of us, I shouted, eh? Like, ah, 20, you want to kill somebody, like. And it was, that was how it started. That did we drill us, and we, we ah. And then, I used to talk about this experience at the point that he wanted to lay some people off. He felt we were just too, so many things were going on. He wanted some people to leave and all that. And then, we had this meeting that day. And then, people started uh, falling down and all that. And later, later, we found out that people that fell down, they are the ones going. <laughs> and me, as a young believer, I was thinking, ah, ah, let me fall down, let you move, glory me. I don't know that <laughs> may I let him get him and let him not move on us. And I was kept in the house. And then later on, the assignment daddy would tell me, mommy would tell me, okay, go and wash plates. Maybe when we came for early morning, I would go to the kitchen, wash. And then at the time, they would, mommy would say, okay, we are traveling, we are going for administration, come and stay with us and wonders. And I'll say, me, me, like, me, what? And all that. But I want to thank God for that, for that. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy, for that privilege. I don't know. Maybe those times, if, if God had not put it in their heart to take me up that way. There were so many things that happened. You know, I was a young believer. I told you I was coming from so much, and then so many things were around me. I was the first born again, like, in my family. And my dad had, like, about 16 of us. And with the negative flow and everything, the first one to be born again among the children. So it was intense. It was an intense battle for me. So if we had not been for the covering, and that closeness that they drew me in, allowed me to stay, allowed me to wake up, join in prayers and all that, maybe it would have been a different case for me. Because, I don't know, the, the forces, you know, like when I said, the forces working against you are more than what is working for you. But in my own case, God has to just help me to be close enough to know what it, it requires and to, you know, that consistency for waking up every day, praying every day, going for program, serving God. I think maybe that was one of the things that God used to have mercy on me. And that's what brought on it. So as a woman, don't take your training. The first thing I would say is don't take your training for granted. Anywhere God has put you to serve, and to be in, to learn. Is it true? Like, well, in, under that day, if you are here, under, under that day, you are, maybe you join through marriage, or you come as a single lady, or you are intending to join, and you know, this is God is calling you to be under that day. One of the things you must know is that don't take your training as a woman. Don't tra take it as a lady. Don't say, I am a woman. Don't just, you know, this, uh, daddy doesn't even like it when you are trying to, I know you know this female, female thing. You are you are looking for husband. You are looking for this. <laughs> it puts him up. Like that's not it. You know when when I joined me, I was not looking for husband because I knew. In fact, maybe that was what helped me to help. That helped me early enough. I was not looking for husband because I was thinking I, God will have to have mercy on me to give me a good man to marry. <laughs> because all these men they look too good. Because I was, I know where I was coming from. 
So I was not really, my hopes were not high. I was not prayed. I was, and God did it fast enough. It's not like a planned thing. It's just God orchestrating my path. Knowing that this is what I need. And God did. So if you are coming, come to be trained. Your spirit first. And don't come as a female. Come as someone that God has put his spirit in. And he has an assignment for. And submit to that training. You know, when I was in the house, I was like the only one living with daddy there. Because I lived with daddy and mommy for a very long time. Like for years. I have my accommodation and paying for it, and I was practically living in the house. So it was like I was the only lady living in the house with, like, sometimes we have 10 guys, 20 men of God. Don't let's say guys. <laughs> 10, 20, 50, depending on the program and time. And we have a lot of people coming around and all that. And then one of the things mommy would mommy train me on is we will fast. As a woman, we will fast. We join them in doing three days fasting then. And then, after the third day, when everybody is sore and we are all tired, mommy will just say, Sister Oya, Oja. And if you have ever followed mommy to market, you know it's not, a, it's not an easy job. <laughs> because, and she's fasting too. She has gone to school. She is my lecturer. I know she's lecturing us. And, and as God will have you, I'm so in a department. So, it's not as if I met her in the department. In fact, I met daddy before I knew she is a lecturer in my department. So, and then we will go to the market. And then we will buy things. We will come home. We will come cook for like 10, 12, 15, 20 people at times. Or at third day of fasting. And then we will serve them. And we will still join in the prayers before everybody will now break. So, those things, they build capacity in you. There is no excuse for failure. You cannot say because you are tired, you will not pray. In fact, mommy, I learned to pray on the go while serving with and working with mommy. Because you, you don't, might not have all the time to sit down. So I, I learned to pray. Pray while cooking. Pray while uh, bathing. Bathe, uh, pray while you are running around. Because you need to survive on prayer. If you are not prayerful, you, you will be weary. You will be tired. You won't be able to. So it was an awesome privilege. So if you have opportunity to serve, especially in the ministry, better take it for take it seriously. Take it because God is grooming you. He's making you. There is no female Holy Ghost. Everything God wants to do through you is not going to happen because you can. A woman will raise the dead. We have we have in the life of Ketchukuma. We have read about women of God that have ministered to men. We minister in different capacity. Not because they are women, and they are because they have allowed the Holy Ghost to work on them, and they have allowed the working of God in their life. Like I said in my in the manual, the law standard and requirement is equal. God will not say because a woman don't fast, you will fast, you will pray. In fact, Daddy will not excuse you say because you are a woman, eh, eh, so don't fight. No, everybody the same requirement. You will, the number of hours you will pray. The number of when we were in school then, in fact, our own set, eh, we are privileged though. We are so blessed. We will go to school, come for class, and then we have four, four hours prayer chains. That time is four, four hours, and we all are involved in it. We are doing consistent. In fact, somebody said fasting cannot finish in CTFA because we are always fasting. If we finish three, three days, the another one will be uh, 100 days. Another one will be. You know, it, those things, eh? it has become part of us now. You can't do without fasting. You can't do without praying now. So that is your training ground. So let us take it seriously. As a woman, as a man in the house. So I looked at, uh, in, the, in, the, in the manual, I looked at the case study of people used by God in different nations. They are men, they are women. We have Esther, we have Deborah, we have Esther, we have Priscilla, the wife of Aquila. We, like, we have uh, people, prophetess, Anna's the prophetess. Daniel, the Jonah, all of them. They were at different nations at time, and then God used them tremendously to bring the cause of God. They fought battles. They've waged war. And like he told us, when we get to a nation with 90 days, you don't sleep. You wake up in the night, you pray, you fast, and if you are a true son, a true daughter in the house, that thing, you have to just do it. So, I did mine, and I'm doing mine. Because you need that stamina when you first get to a nation. You pray. No matter how busy you are, 
you know, you know, uh, 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 work here is tedious, but you have to pray and fast because the devil, know, like Pastor Olufayo uh, was saying, the devil knows you. He knows your address. He knows you once. In fact, if you are coming from the kind of place you are coming from, the training you have had, devil, you are number one target for, for the enemy. He knows you, so you have to stand up and pray, pray and trust God that God will do great things through us in Jesus' name. I said they wait, they had to wage war in fasting, in prayer, they subdue principalities over a whole territory. That's not a woman now, it's an assignment. Look at Esther, the principality she defeated was Ammon. A woman rose up to stand as an arch enemy of God's people. And Esther is the one that God put the anointing upon to deal with that situation at that moment. So God will not going to be our training will not be as of a woman because it's assignment that God will be used is that assignment that God will use to train her. So because a nation depended a, this destiny of a whole nation depended on that lady. So she had to stand up and be strong in her spirit. And the likes of in the New Testament, we look at the likes of Mary and the other women. You look at Luke 24 10. It said they came out and they were the first say, look at Mary, she was the first one that Jesus appeared to and said, okay, go and tell, go and the, tell others the others that have, that have resurrected. Go, last, go, last Jesus, Jesus committing the first message of restoration to women. to women. And I looked at it. You know, Jesus, the, uh, the first time Jesus was talking to someone again and said, I am the resurrection and the life. It's not just about when you die, you wake up. I am resurrection and the life. There is the power of resurrection in you. It was to a woman too that he was talking to when he was raising Lazarus up and Martha came to him. He said, I am the resurrection. So there is this, this uh, first thing about a woman, a woman coming first, God talking to women, because God does not look at us. It's our heart, our assignment that God looks at. And whatever you put on us, so if you are willing, just come to me. And then he will put what he wants to put on you, the anointing, the grace, the impartation he puts on you. If someone told me that I would be doing PhD, I would tell you it's a lie because I was not really much keen about academics. I guess it's part of the grace that rubbed on me. Why staying with daddy and mommy? Because if you look at my undergraduate degree, I didn't even have a two-one. I had a two-two. So anything going to school for that is well, has not really been but as everything, I was, I've just felt when I did my master's that time, I finished my birthday. Daddy just finished praying for me. You know, you pray for us during our birthday, and then you finish praying for me, and I got to, and then the Holy Ghost spoke to me. It's time for your master's. And I told him, and I said, Yes, yes, go ahead. And then I did my master's. This PhD too, I was, I, I don't, yeah, I was trying, okay, okay, we want to use it as a means to enter nation, and then as disguised apostle, and all that. I was trying different places. But God kept telling us South Africa at the time. South Africa. South Africa. I was not interested in South Africa, honestly. But at a point, the, 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 the leading was so strong about South Africa that I, I had to just submit. It took me a while to accept that it's South Africa. But I knew God was the one leading in that direction. And then, then we plugged into it. And it was easy for us. The admission was easy. Everything was easy. Everything came with it. So the devil took his own time, went it, well, I, for visa and all that. But I can't, I can't deny God's hand in the provision of it. When I got there, I knew it was God that really did the work. I now understood why it was like that. So those things are what we got. The ability to be led by the Spirit of God is what we got. You will see the manual. I have, I have, I had a lot of things to speak about, but the time is short. But I want to speak about a few things. You can read your manual. You see how God wrote through people and what God is saying in this moment. But I want to also chip in some things for people that want to join or are already in the flow and are looking at how will I make this relationship work and how will I progress with it. I want to share a few things I've learned while staying under daddy and mommy. And one of the things I used to say is, my mouth speaks faster than my eyes or quicker than my eyes. And it's the truth. One of the things you want to do, you don't want to do as a son in the ministry is you don't want to joke with daddy's work, words. Don't joke with his words. Don't joke with his sharings. Don't joke with his messages. If you don't, if you listen to, the, to daddy attentively, if you don't miss meetings, you'll find that you will need less counseling. 
you find you will need less uh, consultation with him about things. Because as daddy is speaking, he's talking, he's saying things, in, like in the next five, ten years of your life, he's speaking it. Why he's praying for you, why he's counseling you, he's saying a lot of things. He might not even, you might, if, if, you, if, if you have, I want to just advise you, take note of everything he's saying. Take note. His mouth is like a prophecy when he is speaking. Even if he's joking, he's joking, you are, you are a lot of you are sitting and then he's just talking. Don't take anything he's saying at those moments for granted. His mouth actually sees faster. <laughs> then number two, don't have a secret alternative in the, in the in following that in that day. You know, one of the things that helps me is I don't have anybody. I was, and I told you I was a young believer. I just joined the ministry. So I don't have any man of God I was looking up to before. I don't have any woman of God I was looking up to before. They were the first. And any other person I know now, it was true that they are mommy. Because they took me there. Maybe Ado, they took me to Oshogo and all that. So that was it for me. And it has helped me a lot. So I don't have a lot of confusing ideas in my head. And one of the things I noticed is, even if the, the thing you need, the present situation you need, is not, is not uh, something that God is providing through daddy at that moment, it will still be true daddy that you will get that thing through another person. I don't know how to put it. Like, it has worked for me in a way that when I was, when I, we got married, and I wanted, to, it was time to be pregnant, and I was not showing for it, and I was, I kept doing it. So, I... We went for a program. Daddy took us to a program. And then the night, Daddy told me, Sister, I will just go to greet him that night. I had him go to the meeting. And he was in the meeting. So he just told me, Sister, come on, don't let me wash my neck. I will just go to the meeting. I will just go to the meeting. So that they will put you. Because in that program, when you were dressed well, they will allow you to sit at the front row. So I said, OK, sir. That day I was, I would look for a clothes. All of them were tight, so I just put myself in one, so to say, that will allow me to see. I just obey instruction. And then at the meet the following day, the man of God that was preached, that was invited, he just picked me up from the ground. I said, Sister, come here. For instance, you are believing God for the fruit of the womb now. And it's not first for me. You don't need to they just be singing and worshiping God. Just like okay, sister, give us beats. I start be dancing. God, you are so good. You are so good. I saw he was singing, I was dancing, he was I didn't know, I didn't, of course, I didn't talk to him about what was happening. And then, that month was when we got, I got pregnant with my first child. So, you know what I was saying? It, it's not about, I'm looking for a man of God to pray for me, all around. No, I just kept following. Following daddy, he took me to a place, he was the one that gave the instruction of what I did. Maybe he did, I don't know. It just sits sit at the front. I, don't, I just have to obey. And I obeyed. And baby came. So, you see, it is not, don't chase, don't look for things around. If you are under him, just submit. Follow, and then God will bring everything you need at the right time. You see, it might be faster for others. Another thing you must not do is don't compare yourself in this journey. Following and staying with that. You don't compare yourself with another person situations, uh, breakthrough, what they call breakthrough, might look faster for someone than another person. You see, one of the reasons is not because God is good, and it's not because daddy is partial, or the anointing is partial. It's just that we came with different baggage, like I said, like I did not what you were saying yesterday. Some of us came with zero. Some came with something. Added to them. Some came with minus. Me, I, my husband would tell me, we, we came with some minus, minus. So don't compare yourself. You see that person? It, my husband always tell me something. That person, don't compare yourself with this person. Show that day that you me a pastor anymore. Only in prayer, dear, dear. Show me a lay. My compare a pelue. This one and this one. If they, if they form, something, God will still look at something. And he will still have, have, have mercy on it. So we, 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 we don't have anything, anything, anything. So let's just stay put there. And it has helped me. It's because it's easy. You want to compare. Hey, but this person is here. Don't compare yourself. 
just face your who you care for. Daddy, mommy, let, give follow instruction. At the right time, daddy will tell us it's popcorn phenomenon. They are put on fire already. So, by the time it will take for one to pop, my differ from because it's every it's very open here. We have to say that one. You, this person here, yeah, your deadness, baggage is coming with different things that, that, that is beyond your control sometimes. And sometimes it's what you can help with, but sometimes it's beyond your control. But just stay with that fire. Stay on that inside that pot. Don't go out. You might not be doing anything. It might, in fact, you might not just, just stay. Just stay. It will come for you. It, it, it might not be the one they give the microphone to to pray the prayer. You might not be the one in charge of one tea or the other. Just make sure faithfully you are staying where God puts it. And anything God says you should do, do it by time, obey Him. That popcorn will pop. And your own uh, your own uh, prophecy come to pass. So that is another thing I want to uh, add on to. Uh, anyone? So, and then the last thing I will add before I go, my time is up. I'm sorry. Is settle it. Once you are joined with daddy, settle it that is a forever thing. It is not a uh, 30 minutes, 10 hours, 10 years, 20 years journey. So be real. Let's, hey, don't pretend. And settle it. If mommy will catch you sometime, <laughs> mommy will, mommy will, because mommy will, mommy will retreat everything about me to the way I sweep the floor. You, so it's it's about well, just be real and say to it that it's going to be forever. Even when others take vacation. So I just stay with daddy. I, I, I stay with mom. I just stayed. And I learned a lot. I know when mommy will come in the middle of the night, she will come and lay hand on us and what us in the room and pray for them. I, I will be looking at her. I, maybe she thinks I'm sleeping or I'm not sleeping. I will see her. And then she will just lay hand, pray, pray. And I'm like, why is she praying on them in the midnight now? But I learned it. I agree to know it's important. You cancel it. You pray on your children. She will come, she will wake up in the, it's not one, it's not it's like that. Almost every night and then she'll just come, she'll come and pray. So I will I will take notes. So I learned a lot. A lot through staying that and serving in the house. So settle it in your heart that it's going to be forever journey. That this relationship is just like your physical father. Even if you offend one another, one person offend you, you offend, like if you offend that now, you have grace, forgiveness in advance. That one I sure I'm sure of that one. Daddy will have forgiven you before you even offend him. He's, he's, he, because he said he will do he's doing it for his own anointing. And so I can guarantee you that one. You are forgiven in advance. So don't be afraid of that one. Number two, if you offend, it's the devil that is trying to get you. So just Kukuma, forgive yourself and forgive. <laughs> and just come and just say, Daddy, come and help me. And all that. And realign fast. Realign fast in your heart, especially. Then number three, men, don't let brethren or friend you. In staying forever. In fact, I find that that's the most foolish way to live with, with just somebody in the house to offend me. He's full, he's, he's somehow, he's, people in, in, in the house, uh, brethren, brothers and sisters, you will offend one another. So forgive people in advance, and if, we, if they are not forgivable, leave them to their own and focus on your focus. Focus on what brought you to the ministry. So those are the three and the three major ways I feel people live uh, ahead of time, and then and they don't say to it that is a forever thing. And I pray that God will help us. I don't know. The last thing I'm going to say before I leave is this. I don't know many things God is going to be sharing in this meeting. God is distributing graces, anointing, and impartation. God is bringing in this meeting. That one I'm sure of. But one of the things I know that God, I want to say, everyone present here to is a mere dura. There is a grace for prayer, preemptive prayer, a prayer that, that helps you to pray ahead of time, to win battles 
a daughter, there is that grace of prayer in that in the ministry. That if you are a true son, a true daughter in the house, you want to really desire it. Prayer, grace to pray and pray and pray and don't be tired. I've enjoyed that, and I I, I received it. It's not like uh, I got it from prayer. It's not by force. It's not mechanic. Uh, like it's just something that you can't just do without praying. You are in the lab, you are praying. You are in the kitchen, you are praying. You are working, you are praying. It's an impartation. So I want to sense anyone that is praying, you need it. Because the journey ahead, especially if you are coming from where I am coming from, you have baggages, you have a lot of it, you're negative, you want to win different, and you want to go fast. You need that to pray and pray. Not just one hour when you are doing uh, money devotion. Just keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. That grace is in the So desire it. As that this meeting goes on, and I think God is sharing that also, and and I trust God that this is a new season. Sons and daughters are coming in; they are coming more and more, coming in with top speed, like God showed me before I leave Nigeria. So I think this is the beginning of those season. I am trusting God that all of us, everyone that God has alighted on and has picked, we will get it right in this season in Jesus' name. Thank you again, Daddy and Mommy, for this awesome privilege. I don't, I believe I've not bored you. And I believe that we are blessed. And I pray that as this meeting goes on, God will continue to grow, show himself faithful and bless every soul that is present here. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you all. God bless you, Sister Johnny. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed at all? Anybody has been blessed? Wave your hands to me. You can see that the Holy Ghost is not female or male. I mean, how many people have seen God? God is female. God is male. We just came here in this visit so that we can do what we need to do. You know? Uh, because if Mary did not come as a female, who will give back to Jesus? Who will we give back to Jesus? If uh, I, don't, I, I have not come as a female, who will marry daddy? Nobody. Daddy is not, daddy is not a homo. <laughs> so, you know... <laughs> So we are just, uh, God just gave us, this is the earth suit that God gave us, the spirit man. So there is no female spirit. You see that um, if you really follow, uh, you, you start with serving. And one thing, in the place of serving, you grow. When God wants to grow you, he gives you assignments to do. When, as you, are, when you are in the ministry and God gives you something to do, God wants to grow you. Then at times, she's talking also, she's talking about the spirit of prayer that is in the house and God is going to of course that is going to be displayed God is going to distribute so many things and when you can have my child you are you by the time we finish these seven days you know you know you know so that we will go to places and uh, you see things happening in your life through you that's what God wants to do how about you know uh, when God begins to give you assignments it can be prayer assignments you know you just say pray for so so and so person especially when God is taking you of course he gives you a prayer assignment just see somebody, something is happening, and say, pray for this person. If you pray very well for that person, and he gives you another one, you know, give that. That is the way of God. If I say, tell somebody to sweep this place, and he doesn't sweep it, I cannot tell the person to come and sweep the whole of this auditorium again, because the little portion I gave, he has not swept it. So God begins to give you this assignment, and this, and this, and then he's increasing you, and then you are waxing strong, and waxing stronger. Ha, hallelujah. Then, you know, <laughs> She said something. She said when she was coming, she said, ah, God, if you don't want me to be there, don't let me see the man. And of course, she didn't see daddy that day. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that is good. She just puts her out a fleece, you know, a young convert. So I want to say, putting out a fleece is not God leading you. Ah, God, if you want me to let that person come, the devil can arrange that person to go. That's the first person. God, if you, if, you, if you want it to be that it is this person I will marry as I'm going now, let me just see him around that corner. Oh, the devil will go and arrange that person. Well, it's for Shane Lobby, that is the person you will see around that corner. And surely it is not God. How can you imagine? Surely it is not God that didn't want him to see that. That's, uh, I mean, it's not that God didn't want him had to be here. But she put her head that. Let me not just the devil was trying to say, I mean, if you call if you call one bay, you know, and then he just said, eh. So, uh, please don't put out fleeces. That's not the way to be led by God. Of course, that happened long years. She's not in that uh, level again. But I'm just saying, putting that so that people here who are still young, you know, that's not the way to listen to God. 
for see oh no 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 that's not the perfect the devil can manipulate any physical thing you see okay the devil can manipulate and you feel it is good it is not good praise the lord so i say when god brings you to a set man you have a leader ministry in you you have something you know to lead to lead men that means there's something in you there that god wants you and you know when god wants to grow you fast he brings you to to inner carcass of of to serve you know i remember maybe what she also she didn't say that when she that time when she first he said she saw that god wants her to just serve to just serve and you see there's something about serving the man of god there's something about serving it's a fast way to receiving the anointing and to grow it's a fast way for the anointing of that man to rub on you the people you serve if they are authentic people that god has set and god br- brings you i think something came and god brings you there it's, it's, it's it, god is like compressing a curriculum for you to be fast it, it is only here that uh, uh, the five-year course we have come here you can't do it in four years it's only in nigeria when you go out you can say this is my courses i want to do it in so so time i want to finish it in three in one more you compress all the courses to two and a half years and then you are doing another one concurrently there if you have the capacity you can do it you can run it because it's only in nigeria i say eh, oh, t- go, 34 units. five years. No, it's not like that in abroad. Do. If you want, you can compress it. You know, I'm not saying God, um, God, um, no, no, that's what God can compress. But it's going to exact you. It's going to de- demand more on you. And if you are ready to give it, then it grows. So when God wants to grow you, talk about it. Where she get? it's like you are late and God, what God wants to do for you, wants to do it he will, he will make it uh, good in righteousness, he will make it fast in that scripture in righteousness, you know, God wants to speedy walk in righteousness he attaches you to somebody to glorify, to serve you know, closely you know, you from I just come from meeting, I'm just sitting down he, that is, uh, one thing I've found out is that one thing if you have not been there when that program of god for you comes god will definitely somehow you just find yourself in pro, close proximity and most of the time where god will start from is do many things for that man if you cannot do many things then you cannot go place it's not the anointing god oh, no we're going to the anointing yeah. anointing oh, but, oh, shele, shele. Oh, what was elijah doing to elijah elijah in the plan of god ultimate plan of god god was looking for a prophet that will take two double portion of elijah in fact, before Elijah said, oh, uh, uh, he's not better than his father. So, you know, continue some ball on label. God knows the end from the beginning. He knew Elijah was going to pray that prayer. He knew that Elijah was going to do that. And he was going to tell Elijah, go and anoint three people. So he, he had sent Elisha, Elisha, go and uh, serve. When he, did, this is Elisha that poured water on the hand of Elijah. And Elijah is, uh, you know, Elijah is one man that will go to the ground and don't stop. Don't see the Lord. Don't you worry, worry about it. And I'm a Julie one. He was a rugged man. He was he did not so much laughingness, you know, a rugged man. And then he was the one. Don't she, ah, man of God. Let me preach. Let me preach. Let me. Okay, let me come and lead this thing. Elijah, you know, sit down there. Go and bring water. When God begins to put you in that place, you are bringing water. I want to finish one. Some people say oh, you are serving. You know, I don't know this generation. Please, they all can own sin in you. Ah, oh, sin in you. Oh, see any If you see go and see any then why buy any If you see that you are serving man, then you will collect the, the reward of man. But if you see you are serving God, that God puts you here. Of course, if it's man, but man of God, he's a man, but of God, because God has man to do it. That God puts him there, you know, to train others to bring. And God told you, come here. God wants to give you a lot of yes. See, that means something is there for you. That's where God wants you to pop. That's where God wants you to grow. That and so many things will be happening for Wama Koyimbi, Wama Mu Yimbi. How many people you have watched Mario? You will take this one here, take this one, little by little like that. So when he tells you, come and wash him, come me, baby no bata me, he no want some and suffer me, my shah no bata. I remember those days, the first bread, all these people are ministers. They will fetch water. Oh, you do we are enjoying, you know, there is no water in the house. Boho. And just, at times they want to wash clothes, they will go and use boho. I say, Conga one bear, and you say, hey, le, <laughs> you have a pair for air if you conga for sure. So you pay boho. And you know, there is no like, you know, but you know, hey, there's no meat. <laughs> Why not use this well to wash clothes and then use the other ones? Cut here if you don't know. Talking about them, we're not in law and we have limited the. Uh, 
Oh, you too. I want bridging. Oh, no, my for sure. Oh, no, my share everything. One fair share, man. I come out there. Yeah, money. I ain't bad doing. I want to bridge. I want for generation. Oh, one car up. Kutu kutu. Don't want to happen. They will fetch water. I want back on. I be brought in. I want back on. One need be toilet. I want point. I want some forty person. I want some. Don't want to see. I want one point. Pass it. You buy washing machine. Washing machine. Egbo. Shani washing car. Tony. Share for one for sure, bro. I be the one. I want no one be. Bo go one. E wa wo anointing to wa lori won nisin. Oh God, of course in oni ka lukun ti ni ipe, Olorun ti pe lati orun. Bo ngba mi so o ma won mi ipe wa lori won sugbon won je o titi won fi lo pada baba ba God o. Because one fatherless, one proud, one fair come under. And all of them, I deal with you, can you know I'm winning? Oh, man, deal with you, pride. Oh, sorry for speaking. You remember me interpret your job, but she was saying no meaning. All of man, deal with you, pride. Yeah, I'm winning. All of my put it so that on deal with you, flesh. Only the flesh, but for do they were useful for God. The earthly vessel must be broken in all our lives. We got to break it, and it is only God that knows the process is going to take you through that that earthly vessel must be broken. If it's not broken, you will hinder God. That flesh will hinder God. Because say, no flesh can stand before God. You are not, it, it, indeed, you cannot do the will of God. It will always be opposite of God. Flesh will always be opposite of God. And all of us, we got flesh in our life. God has to deal with us. When you got born again, beloved, it's your spirit that got born again. But that flesh, the training that has been given, the negative training that has been given, that stamped upon your spirit, needs to be broken. And when it is broken, then you can be useful for God. For many people, that flesh has not been broken and they are not useful for God. Despite the fact that they are carrying an authentic call of God and that's why God takes us through process. That's why God takes us through men. He tells you, especially when that flesh is so strong to you, he takes you through a tough man. A tough man that will not mind whether he has done anything. Why? He will not give you microphone to do anything. He will give you all jobs. As you are doing that thing, that thing is being broken in your life. As you are going there to serve, it's being broken in your life. As you are going there, you are becoming more fit. What happened to Josh, jo- Joseph? Joseph had to leave his father's house and went to Potiphar's house so that the flesh can be broken. As he was becoming a servant, he was being broken again. And he didn't know. He thought he was going down. But because God is breaking the flesh, he didn't know he was going nearer and nearer and nearer the throne as he was serving and that flesh was being broken. So that one day when he sees his brothers, he will not say, I'm going to take vengeance. That flesh would have been broken enough and say, my beloved, it is God that sent me ahead of you. It is not you that sent me to that to, 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 to that um, Okweru. It is God. The flesh had been broken to that, that he could not take offense against the people that manipulated him, against the people that did evil to him, against the people that wished him dead. He was even doing good to them. It takes the flesh to be broken, to get to that realm. And that's what God wants to do in the life of everybody. And I believe that's why God is bringing you here. I don't care the number of us, but I know something is going to land on us. The fire of God is going to land on each person. And God is going to help us that the flesh, the flesh is what is hindering people in life. Flesh flesh. When God brings you to an anointed man, that man may be like Elijah. He doesn't care. I say, come on, go and do this. Come on, go and do this. Don't come. She says, don't compare yourself with others. And she says, come on, phone brother, like down for me. Ah, she be a possibility. So you only work in any now, man. She only Baba ni ego lo kon be bad moti. Do you know that it was that is in the Bible? That's part of. Say, Lord, what will this person tell me? What will he do? And she has a point. What will he do? Ah, God. Which one is your own concern? See, any cook bad you One for me, she a mini con. She goes to brother, family bed. She goes to brother, can you bed? Ah, this work is too much. You won't complain. You are something has to be broken in you. You are the more it's getting broken, the more you are serving, the more you are going down. Oh my God. Baba says something. Our father in law says something. Sometimes he say at times he sends some people that in this convention you'll be washing toilets. That person may be a pastor in the future, a pastor to come in many years. But first thing, Baba will send, go and be. So you go and you don't have to wash convention, don't have to You toilet, go man for. If you can wash that toilet, then you can minister to the people of God. But if you don't, you know, you see, be, oh, she and come, she and come. Surely, oh, she and come, oh, tea go, tea grow. But the day you now accept it, you do it willingly and say, I know, oh, don't break and come. Why can't you come? Why can't be a Then you are worthy to minister to others. That's it. God even had to do it to Moses. In the, when, when he saw in Anjo, he was in Joe. What happened? God took Moses to um, father in law, Jethro. Ah, she put on board of who? What was she accounting? She put, eh, men, she did not, you know. Oh, oh, but something was being made. So, so that Moses, after that, I don't know about training. Well, no, 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 no,
God is the master trainer. He's going to use a man to train us. So he trained. Well, after that, they said Moses he became the meekest man on earth. That's after going to Jethro. She, Allah, no training. He passed physically. But Jethro was a man of God, according to even even what the advice. Oh no, he go take him in Jethro. God took him to that place. Why did he not take him to another place? He took him to that man. This man knows me. So he stayed there. But kill on she. He shall do and he come like back when Moses. She won't die on one bar, one die on one bar. Father in law, see father in law. Ah, so by she let your brand here. On see Baba Yahweh, want to follow Egba. Abi. And yeah, hey, he be to one by any. He lay a no. That's where he is living with the in-laws now. Ah, what kind of thing? In-law. And then to make matters worse, he's taking care of the of the of the business. Only my job was to show father in law. What of him share you? Ah, yeah, once or something, yeah, in the village. And hey, your man. But God is making destiny out of that boy to keep serving in that place, to keep serving in that place, to keep so that the flesh will be when charity, when the flesh is done with, then that's treasure in the earthen vessel can come out. And when people see it, then people can be blessed. People can be blessed. People can be blessed. Hallelujah. I hope you have been blessed by Sister Jonas sharing. God help us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I have my... Uh, our next um, speaker is... Um, our next speaker is uh, our brother. Our dear brother here. Yeah. When he sent his um, his uh, preaching, hey, I say the preacher. How, how will I? How will I? Please, oh, we are not bringing you. He's here, present with us. I said uh, today is today. <laughs> the preacher has come, and the preacher and the teacher. <laughs> ah, I hope we will not spend one hour here. But I didn't. You know, everything everybody sent. I didn't remove anything from it because I know the Holy Ghost is in control. Everybody, in Thailand, this is know anybody. Everybody, me. But I said I didn't remove everything. I just put it there, like that. That whatever you want, just keep saying it. This is Holy Ghost meeting. It's, it's not my meeting. It is not. A, so you should know how to tread in the in the courts of the Lord. You should know how to tread in the in the things of God. So. Um, our brother Martins is the next person. He is here online. I mean, he's here on ground. Sorry, he's here on ground. And uh, he has, you see the, please, what page? Help me to check so that I can tell people. How many people have the manual, please? I told you, please go to your manual, Sister Denise page. It's not Oluwa Doni, it's Ola Doni. So please change it there. That was a mistake and error. 37. So, ah, 37, um, uh, page 37. You see that he has preached and taught and uh, ministered there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is our brother, uh, Eji Matswa. Uh, did I get it? Eji Matswa Martins. She, I mean, he, I want to read the introduction. Please. Ma uh, say my name, no. <laughs> brother Eji Matswa Martins. Sin is from Kogi State, Basa, to be precise, by tribe, by the earthly tribe. <laughs> he came into the house in the year 2020 during 60 days crusade, and since then has been in the house to the glory of God. You know, he has just put his uh, profile very small. Some people they put their profile. I say I will help them to expand it a little bit. Uh, our brother uh, Martins, he's called Martins. I thank God for her, his life. He's a, he's a Christian, he's a brother, you know. When they debross you somewhere and they say, our former brother so and so is now Mr. R. You know that that person has sinned. But thank God he's still a brother. <laughs> he's a brother. We thank God for his life. God has been using him in different ways. He came in contact with daddy during the 60 days crusade, the first time of experience. Ever since that time, he's been here. And one thing I've seen is that, you know, we want to do some. Brother Martins, God, Brother Martins. He lives there. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. And he will come. He's been passing, doing everything. He's a son in the house and has been doing so many things. And then I didn't even know that he knows how to drive and he's been helping to drive. Especially when our pastor Mayowa uh, engages him to drive, he helps him to drive. And then one day I say, ah, you know, somebody came and um, said God told him to give a brand new um, my, um, 
motorcycle, bike, very good one, to the house, to the ministry. And we came back when we tried, we saw it, Jaroba. That's the first thing. Jaroba. Watch it, so Jaroba cars are coming. You know, and there are sons, and there are sons that we give it. I say, ah, who knows how to ride my motorcycle? I don't know how to ride. And I'm not intending to know his car that I ride. <laughs> so I was thinking, Brother Toby will know because the way Brother Toby's face, ah, he told me, ah, I showed you a car. Brother Toby, he said he cannot, ah, so can, ah. Then, Brother. Um, Josiah, I said, Josiah, I know you. Everything you can do, you okay, you can drive it. So somebody told me, Brother Martins, ah, Brother Martins, you can drive motorcycle. He said, I can drive. Ah, ah, you can drive. That's very good. Though. So that is Brother Martins. He can drive. Uh, you know, apart from all these things, and he's doing his master's in footer here, apart from all these things, he's a firebrand. You, by the time he's coming to pray, you will see, ah, that people won't start already. Oh, I want to in here, in here. Oh, and, be. and I believe God is going to impart people this morning in the name of God. Join me to welcome Brother Egypt, Egypt Master, sorry, Brother Martins of God. God bless you. Over to you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I sincerely want to appreciate God for this privilege. Please kindly have your seats. I really want to appreciate God for this privilege. And I also want to thank uh, Daddy and Mommy. For giving me this opportunity, I really, really appreciate you, sir. And I pray God Almighty will continue to bless you. I, I sincerely so much appreciate this opportunity. When the message was being sent to me on WhatsApp that I'm, I'll be the one to take one of the workshops, I was scared because ha, I just came in 2022 during 60 days crusade. And then when mommy also showed me those people that will be ministering, I, 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 I searched all through, I was scared because ha, be, when they have been ministering, they have been said uh, they have stayed in the house for 15 years, 10 years. So wh when, when it's got to my time, when I check, I only spent two years. I only spent two years. So, so I really, I really appreciate, sir. And thank you very much, mom. I really appreciate, sir. Yes, I, I came through the system in 2022. I did my NYC year, 2022, in uh, Futa, to be precise. And uh, during this, uh, they were praying for program. I normally pass here. Then I saw them building this place. But I didn't know that they they have crusade. It was established and I told me that they are, they are having 60 days crusade. Initially, I was saying this thing is too much because 60 days crusade. I saw someone I'll be coming for 60 days. And I told her that I will only come for once. After then, I will not come again. Because after because me, I don't normally go out. I just stayed in my room, pray. Then I find time to read scriptures. Anytime I'm going for for I mean, my postings, I always, I always take my Bible along in my bag just for me to read in the office. So, and I said, I will just come once. The first day I came, I, I think I sat here. I can never forget that spot. So when daddy was ministering, I, I, when I got to my talk, which is that seriously speaking, I will, I will never miss this program. So I have jotter because anywhere I go to, I only have jotter to jot. So I was jotting, I was jotting, I was jotting. So it was one day whereby mommy was preaching and was using the word of God. And she said, uh, we, are, we are not here to be, to be healed actually. But you are here to contact the grace of healing. Wow. So I was looking at myself. I said, okay. So I was jotting, I was jotting, I was jotting. The word of, I, I so much love that program to the extent that I, I will leave work by 2 o'clock to cook so that we will be here in time. And uh, during this process, we do go to Ikogun. I was privileged to go to Ikogun. That is lay hand on us. I see that the opportunity that uh, I was being laid hand by the man of God. So we go to Ikogun to invite people far and near. So during this 60 days crusade, one day, mommy was ministering and was saying there is power in the world. And she gave four Joshua chapter 30 verse 8, which says, For this cause, the Son of God was being manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And she said, What we have received in this place, even though your Lord once is being sick, I assure you, when you use the word of God, they will be, they will, they will be healed. I said, wonderful. So I wrote it down. That night, it's as if, it's as if God... Is, 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 is want me to listen to that thing very well so that someone will be healed. Immediately I got home that day, that day was on, sat, on Saturday, stroke Sunday. So when I got home, when I got home, someone just called me from Mina. He said, hello, hello. I said, I said, I said, I said what happened? He said, uh, he said, his brother is sick and they have been to four different hospitals. And this is the last one, this is the fourth one. And uh, his mother has given up, her mother has given up that uh, she will die. I mean, the boy will die. So, I said, ah, give me time. But during these 60 days, they have taught us that they have taught us that uh, we need to use the word of God to confront the devil. 
we don't use our natural words. One thing I learned about daddy is that when daddy wants to pray for you, he can pray for 10 different people, but different prayer, like different prayers, different prophecy will come to each and every one, different one which will not be the same. So I use, I now say, give me time so that I will search the scripture. So, because I've never done that before, so I, I search the scripture, I opened that journal that mommy preached that day, and, and the only scripture I could remember is 4 John chapter 3 verse 8. So I, I, I said for this, I, I opened my Bible, I said, before I call the person, I opened my Bible, I said, for this cause, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So I called the person back, and I said, okay, now, I will pray for you. But before I pray for you, Daddy has taught us the lesson that we need to boost the person's faith. So I preached, I preached to the person, I said, and now I will pray. Then I used that particular scripture to pray. When I prayed, they said, amen, because they said they have given that particular boy eight injections, nothing worked. And they said it is an attack from nowhere. But they didn't know how, because the boy was crying that he doesn't want to die. So when I used the scripture, then that was on Saturday, stroke Sunday. Instantly, I received early morning call on Saturday that the boy was being discharged to the glory of God. That's how the boy was being discharged. But I want to use the word of God. So since then, after the 60 days, I've joined the flow. People, and that's the demand of people calling me from far and near. I began to get scared. Why, people, why is it that during this period, people were now calling me that they were being sick? My mother will call me that she's sick, I should pray for her. My siblings will call me that I should, I should, I should, that I should pray for her. So after these 60 days, we are people led to join the all-night prayer, thereby you pray. The first time I joined the all-night prayer, it was a war. I was checking the time. When we took, when we, because it was here, I was, because I've never done that before in my life. For someone to pray from 12 to 6, I've never done that. So it was a burden on my heart. And, and after then, we have been coming, we have been coming with my friends, Gift and uh, Star Beatrice, and we have Brother Abraham here seated. So we have been coming, we have been part of the flow. But one thing that now gets me scared, it was on my birthday. It was as if Daddy released a mantle on me. I can never forget in my life. And I want to open the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. What he used on me. Chapter 1, verse 10. It was the, the, on my birthday, September 13, 2022. Okay. I read from here. It says, See, I have said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build, and to plant. And, she, and daddy said, before he prayed, he said, we have the prophet in the house. Ah, the prophet in the house is doing better. I was scared. Who is the prophet in the house? And he called my name. And as he was praying, as he was praying, he said, someone should read this from Genesis chapter, chapter 5, which says, from the inward part, God has known the prophet. And he said, now the grace of this city FM, now the mantle of the prophet has fallen upon you. And from this day onward, God will begin to open my eyes. I was saying, hey, man. I was just crying. I was saying, hey, man. He said, God will open my spiritual eyes. He open my spiritual ears. And I'm, I'm now a prophet in my family to destroy altars, to bring down principalities. As I was saying that, I was saying, amen. So I, I jotted that particular verse in my, in my notes. So I was thinking it's a normal thing. That is, that's the day I learned to take the words of the Father very serious. That word is very, very serious. So... Pastor Afo called me, he was not in country, he called me and he said, what daddy has said, it is not ordinary. Then I begin to say, I, I didn't understand, sir. And he explained that, he said, my horn shall be, shall be exalted like the horn of the unicorn. I would say, wow. So he said, these are the words whereby, these are the parts I have in the calling. That God has made me now to become a prophet, ordained by daddy by words. That I should just believe that from this time onward, I am now a prophet, and what God is sending me to do is to destroy principalities in my homes. I said, okay. So after that, that was September, I was, I was supposed to go home for my NYC. I was supposed to go home by October, then we prayed. Then daddy said, everybody that I've received from God, I said, God said I'm still staying yet, and I'm still staying, that I'm not going yet. So when I got home, it was, it was a bad boy. Immediately I got home that day. They wanted to give me food. I was, I was, everybody was happy. My mom just came, was, she was leaning on the wall. She could not walk. I was ah, what? I, I didn't understand this thing. She was leaning on the wall and she gave me food. And he said, eh, she doesn't want to tell me that she has been sick for, for, for some months now. That she knows that once she tells me that eh, I will be scared, I, 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 then I could not eat the food again. I said, let's, let's leave the food aside. So the, the food was left, left aside. I said, okay, now that, the, now that you said eh, 
you, you are sick. Now, let, let me pray for you. I couldn't eat the food. And as I was praying, I wanted to pray. The doctor said, I have diabetes. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Hey, I said, God. So now, you cannot walk, and doctor said, you have diabetes. So, and I said, okay, get me. We, got, we have anointing oil. She got anointing oil. Before I could pray, she had been down. Then I prayed for her, and I heard the phone. I said, tomorrow morning, go to the hospital, go and check yourself. Immediately, she got to the hospital, she told the nurse, they checked. The nurse said, she's, my mother should tell her what she used overnight. Because everything, there is no more diabetes again. That, that there is no more diabetes again. That everything left. And someone that could not walk was walking. People were not asking her, ah, I know the one that, that, that was leaning on my mother, like, lie down on the floor for me and said, she thanked God that she gave back to me. And I said, all glory and honor be to God. So I was, I was at home. During when I was at home, a witch confronted my mother. The witch was living in our area before I was not born. I was like, but now when a lion trains somebody, I'm telling you, that person will become a lion. When someone that is very bold, when you stay under a man that is very bold like that, he's a very bold man. <laughs> he's a very bold. When you stay... When you stay under him, when we come for nitrogen, you say, Koni Dafu Devu. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> when you say, Koni Dafu Devu, ah, in my mind, I say, ah, devil is in trouble, true. Because, because, because when, when a leader believes on a particular thing, it always rubs on the followers. So, what actually attracted me to him is that he had the spirit of boldness. He, nothing confronts him, no, nothing take him unaware. Is all, and he has told us how to hear from God. He has told us what to do. And one thing I learned about that also, before he prays, he used the scripture. Anything he want to do, he want to, he want to pray for anything, he will search the scripture and he will give us scriptures to boost our faith and we pray on these scriptures. So when, the, when I got home, the, and the woman asked power, the woman is a nupe woman. When they say nupe woman, they have juju. Very concurrent, they have juju. So the, the, the woman succeeded in killing three people. Why? Is because he said in that environment nobody dared to sell anything that she's selling. So, so once the, the first person that did it, she killed the person. And after that, that she killed the person, she will come out to confess that she said she told the woman not to sell anything. So actually now the woman is dead. Let her go and sell in the grave. Ah. So people, people in that environment, she became a principality in that environment. People, people were getting scared of of her. So, ah. So she, the, th- the third person, I mean the second person was very close to my mom. The woman just slept, could not wake up again. And she still confessed that she killed the person. And my, our house is kind of very close to the woman. The woman has sent people. Before that, people now came to my mom and said, now that this woman has killed three people and you are saying the same thing, it's better for you to pack up and never to say this thing again. And she has been saying this thing for years. Even before the woman could come to that environment, but she, the woman said she doesn't want anybody to compete with her. So my mom told me, my, the, as my mom was telling me, because my mom was crying, she said, ah, that uh, she's not going to sell again, no, she's not going to do anything again. No. Ah, and in my mind, Koni Dafu Devu. So, ah, so, and I told her that, uh, I, 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 I told her that, uh, in as far as this thing is concerned, she's not going to stop selling anything. So people were not coming. Then one day and I came out, people that came, to, because Muslims were coming, that don't say this thing again, they were scared of her. So and I came out, I told her that now that this battle line has been drawn, you go and tell the woman that this woman will not stop. And if the woman do otherwise, I will confront her. My mom was scared. Why are you saying this? I say, forget. We need that for devil. <laughs> so, <clears throat> because, because, this, uh, because during this... Uh, uh, are, every time VG, it has really built capacity in someone's life that there is nothing that can confront me. I have this mentality that there is nothing that can confront me. So the, when, when they met the woman, the woman said, no problem. My mom said, ah, be careful, be careful. I said, no, don't worry, don't worry. It is not a battle of you again. I have stepped in the case. So as I was going to church with my friend, as we were going to church, then uh, I saw the woman and I and I I, I, I punched straight to the woman and said, "If care is not taken, I will take your life." The woman saw me. The woman was scared. The woman ran away. So my mom was not saying, ah, "What did I do to the woman?" I said, "I didn't do anything." But I only told her that uh, she's going to die. <laughs> so after then, before you know, people, the, the following day, people the woman now sent people to my house and said, "Come and beg my mom." 
because her son dared to take her life. That if she didn't stop, because she, she now begins to confess that actually she have tried my mom, but her son is standing by her side. That, that all what she could, that she could not do, that she now she sent people to my mom that they should beg my mom, that my mom should please, should please to forgive her, that she should also beg her son not to take her life, or that, she's not, that now my mom can say anything she wants to say, that, that there is no problem again. Ah, I'm telling you, like what daddy has said in initial steps, he said, I am now a prophet. And the mission of the prophet is what? Is to root out. What are we rooting out? Things that are not meant to be. And to pull down and to destroy. And to destroy. When you stay under a man of God that always preach love, that will tell you that even though your, even though your enemy, when, once, they are doing, once they are attacking you, you need to go and beg them. I tell you, before you know, even you will see your enemy as your best friend. But daddy has taught us that we should be bold, that the word of God is above any other power. And I, and I give glory and honor to God. And I also want to, this because what I was giving is my days after 60 days, and it's full of testimonies. That is why I am giving testimonies. I, could not, I, I am not here to preach. And uh, also, also, when, when uh, I remembered I was still at home, then people, people now started coming, people now started coming. Before you know, if anybody is sick that came to buy anything, my mom will call me that, okay, oh, someone is sick, oh, as he's buying that, she come and pray for her. Instantly, they will get healed. As they were coming, people were getting healed. So, and I told my mom that the only thing that is happening is that what I have connected myself to a man of God. So, it is, it is an error for me to die young. And I said, the covenant of this house, I wrote it in a paper, that the covenant of my family is what? We will be here for a very long time. And I told her that, me, I have taken covenant. What is the covenant? I have drink bread. I have taken wine with the brethren, with, the, with this house. So the blood also flows in me. And what flows in me also flows through my family. So you should not worry. We'll be here for a very long time. So our, our, our neighbor that is, very, that is living close to us, so my, my mom told me that she has kidney problem. The, the little girl has kidney problem. I said, what? And they admitted the girl. So I told her, that, can I also go to the hospital? Which she said, why not we should go? When we got to the hospital, I was crying. Ah! The, the, the belly was, was swollen and the mother has given up. And very close to us, they never believe at all anything can just happen. But I, when my mom was saying, talk, my mom just, I was just sitting down. They were just discussing. They were just discussing. But in my mind, I was boiling because because once, once you stay with a man of God that has anointing, anything that is against that anointing will always offend you. So when, when I saw, I, 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 I saw the, the, the girl lying on the hospital bed, ah, so after that, because I said, can I pray? The woman and said, I can pray. So first of all, I opened the scripture. I used the word of God, like what daddy did. What always comes to my mind, anytime I want to pray for anybody that has been sick, I will say, what will daddy do in this situation? If daddy is here, what will he do in this situation? So, immediately I used the word of God and I prayed. I was, but when I prayed, I said everything is done. But to my greatest surprise, the following day, they said this guy is being discharged from the hospital. They said the kidney is well, is, is well equipped. The, the doctor said they don't have any reason to, to, to let her be in the hospital. Rather, what? For her to be discharged the following day. I said, What? So they said the kidney is working well now. To the glory of God, the guy has not been going to school. When you see a very, the, the stomach was very big. But now when I got home recently, the guy is doing well, going to school, and all glory and honor be to God. And, and the mother said, ah, we thank God that we have Martins in this our environment because what? He has been with God. And I really appreciate God. And this is not only that. There was one time I, when I came to Akure here for NYC, I'm just an usher in the church. So nobody knows me at all. But during these 60 days, I mean, we have time whereby we have a long time stretch prayer from Thursday night to, to, to Saturday morning. I've never seen that kind of prayer before. I've never experienced it before. It was so long. So after then, the person has said, I will be the one to take salmon the following Sunday. Ah, and I said, wow, thank God. So I just prepared a short message because I've prayed and I begin to pray that Saturday. On that Sunday morning, I went to church. On getting to church, I was an usher. Jonas said, I should, I should come and pray. I just preached a short message. To my greatest surprise, I, I could not, they, they didn't allow me to preach much. Everywhere was jam-packed with the power of God. I begin to get surprised. Things are happening. And 
The following day, I said, I don't want to be a, because they have minister seats. I am a youth minister to the glory of God in my church. I don't want to be among the youth ministers again. I just want to be. The man said, no. That in as far I have done, in as far God have used me, I, I will still maintain my seat. That no matter what, I will still maintain my seat. That, that in as far that God has used me, that I am, an, an, I am now an asset to the glory of God, that I will still maintain my seat. I give God the glory. And in my church, to the glory of God, people will come to me. They said, tell us the secret. And I told them that the only thing is that if you are not doing what I'm doing, if you are not connected to a man of God the way I'm connected, when you say certain things, you be held responsible. But what gives me assurance is that I have a father standing behind me. When a, a soldier cannot face a, a, a whole community, a soldier, no. He always has what? They always go in group. And when they go in group, when they are being confronted, they fall back to the barrack because what they have reserved in the barrack. And I told them, when I start to preach, the only thing is that I have someone to fall back to. That if anything happens, I have someone to go back to. Some of them will come, they say they want to sow seed. I say, who am I that I want to sow seed to? <laughs> I, say, I say, who am I? They say, they say, this one even came to my house and said, he knelt down. He said, please, I should lay hand. I said, who am I? I said, the only thing, because they were saying they want to know that. They want, they want to know that. And I told them that if at all you want to know that, the, you, you, you need to be convinced by yourself. It's until whereby you, 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 in your heart, you are being convinced that truly I want to, because it will get to a particular time, <laughs> if care is not taken, you'll be tired. You'll be tired. You'll be tired because you'll be looking, ah, this thing is, 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 is getting too much. But, and I told him that the only thing is that, he said, where is the man of God? I said, when you are coming from Southgate, you will see a big board. You will see the man, the, the, that is the man, that is Reverend Ogundari, that is the man I follow. And he said, where we do normally pray? I said, you cannot join our prayer meeting without him letting you know. But one thing I, I know of him is that even though I tell him to come and join, it's just that me, I'm convincing him. I said, when you think about it very well, when this program was, when program was going on, he came. He also sat down. I gave him the link that you should just watch. So if you are being convinced to join CTO FM, you must be convinced by the Holy Spirit. You must be convinced by the Holy Spirit. And if God has not told you to, 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 to like told you to join, I'm telling you, you need, you need, you need to pray more and what and, and tell God that what you want to join. Let's open our Bible to Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Acts 4 13. Acts 4 13. He said, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were on land and ignorant men. They marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus. They said, what? Well, they have been with, what? with Jesus. That means they, they know that it's only Jesus that have this kind of boldness. It's only Jesus that have this kind of infantry to confront, to, to confront anything. That what? They have been with Jesus. They have been with Jesus. Recently, in my, in, in my church, I, uh, 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 our ADO, they call it ADO, our district overseer, the, is in this Akure, he came to my church, and I was asked to just speak for five minutes. Ah, pastor said I should just speak for five minutes just to do the review. And I was doing the review, the man was shouting. The man was just shouting. The man was just shouting. I said, ah, me, I was scared. Maybe I've, I've done something that is very wrong. Because it, it's, it's like it's our, our overhaul head in this Undo, all our churches. I, the man was shouting. And after everything, the man said he want to know this Martin that they have been talking about. You see, fire cannot be hidden. Fire cannot be hidden, no matter what. And what I've learned from Daddy is that what is that you you don't mingle with friends. You don't mingle. Is is a is a man of principle. Is a man of the spirit. You don't mingle with friends. So and uh, Daddy, I mean, the man has said he want to see me. I was scared. The way the man saw me, the man said. To be sincere, that he really enjoyed the ministration, that he wants me to come and minister in the overall conference, whereby all our Korean people, all our churches, workers, we gather together for me to minister. I was scared because nobody has ever done that before. For a youth to stand among thousands of people to minister just for a conference, I said, I, I, I was scared. I was scared. The man has said he's going to, he, like, like he's going to make it happen. And to the glory of God, it happened. And people were being blessed. What am I saying? When you look at the case of Joshua, the Bible makes us understand Joshua was a man of valor. But when war came, the youth sent Joshua out. But the elders went to first Joshua. Meaning, I mean, Jephthah to say, in Joshua 11, verse 1, down. 
Jephthah was a man of valor. But the, the problem is, I mean, the thing is that the elders see something in, in, in Jephthah that they cannot see in anybody. The youth chase him away, but the elders, they have experience, so, but, but when you stay with a man of God and the grace of God rubs on you, even elders, they will come to seek for you. And they went to seek for Jephthah, and they make Jephthah their overall head. They have experience, they are old. They said, when a, 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 a adult have sackcloth more than the more than the young ones, but when it's come to, to, to the anointing of God, staying with under a man that carries grace, I tell you, the fire of God cannot be hidden. The fire of God cannot be hidden. So the elders went to fetch Jephthah out and make them their head. What the youth drove him out? The elders, because of, they have the experience, but what they said, no, let us what fetch him out. And to the glory of God, it was so wonderful. And I, I also remember when I was in a, this happened last month. This happened last month. People, people were calling me from far and near. People were calling me that this person is sick, someone, someone that has been pregnant for this thing. Then one thing and I, and I told myself is that I need to connect to the grace of daddy. Whereby Elijah said, I mean, Elijah said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? So I, I started using that word. Where is the Lord God of Reverend Ogundare? In my, like, when, the, when I saw the man, the man came, the man is a staff of Futa here. And when the man came, the man said he was sick. When I look at him, and daddy has told us that we, we can pray for any sick, we can lay a hand on, the, on anybody. So when I saw the man, people were, pe people were pitying the man. I, in, my, in my spirit, I'm, I was very angry. I was very angry. And I said, and I took the man out. And I lay and I said, he believed in Jesus, I preached him. And I said, the God of Reverend Louis Olufemi Ogundare, the grace upon his life, let him speak for you. And as I was praying, I was, I was praying, everything changed. The man I said, ah, Thank you. The following day, when I saw the man, the man was very okay. All to the glory of God. All to the glory of God. We are four in my family. And uh, in my family, we, I normally pray for them. Ever since I joined to UFM, I've learned to use the anointing oil to pray for them. And we have our last born. He's 18 years old. He's in Footmina now. When I got home, and I said, it is now for me to impart the grace which I've received from CTUFM. They were now looking at me, and because they, they have the heart to serve God, they are also burning for God. And I told them that they should, they should, they should all stay. My mother, everybody, everybody stay, even my dad stay. And I took anointing oil. I said, I said as this anointing oil touch your head, the grace over Reverend Femi Ogundare begin to work for you. The healing mantle, the, 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 the boldness to confront principalities begin to work on you. And when I laid my hand on them, they, they were just saying amen. They were just saying amen. They were just saying, I said, you are not to be, to, to be sick. You are meant to be healing the sick. So as the hand was being laid on them, I came back to Akure. Before you know, my younger brother called me and said, ah, that, could I believe that uh, someone was sick in their school? And he just stayed there. He just prayed for the person. The person got it instantly. I said, it is the grace that flows in the house because I, I really love my family so much and I don't want anything to happen to them. So, so I said, let you be connected to the grace of Reverend Ogundari. And when I was at home, I will play the jambos. I will play a uh, sermon for everybody to hear, to saturate the house. So when my, our last born also, someone eventually to die in our neighborhood, and, and uh, he said, immediately they told him he was very hungry. That why will someone die? He said he heard the child, he was praying, he was praying, he was praying, that the child could not, he was calling the God of Reverend Ogundare. I said, he was praying, he was praying. And I told him, after then, I said, he prayed for hours. And I told him that the only thing is that you, 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 there are some things that you don't know. He now said, he now, he now, he now said no problem, that he's going, to, he's, he's going to fast. I tell you, he began to fast for days. They have to come in to, to, to beg him to eat. They said, because he prayed for the, he prayed for the dead, the dead could not rise. He, he, he was fasting. He was, they have to beg me, and I told him that he should calm down. My sister also is, is in a local jail, uh, FU Hell. Anytime we call, she will tell me her testimony that she will pray for people, they were getting healed, that things were happening. Now, in my family, to the glory of God, if anybody is being sick, I normally try my brother, I say, you call this person to pray for the person, and they will give a testimony that what? This person is instantly healed. I give glory to God. My life will have been a wasted. Daddy said, Daddy said, God is sending me to my family. What if I'm not in the family at that particular moment, my mother will have died? What if I'm not in the family at that moment, things will have happened? What if I'm not in the family, a lot of things will have happened? You know, we, you know, you know the men, they never believe that their, their, their son has stayed with the, with the man of God. So one day, 
my, my dad came and he told me that uh, in their working place, people are not being promoted and the man have vowed that uh, he's, he's going to remove him. And I told him that me, I don't want to pray more, but when you go to, when you go to this thing on Monday, the God of Reverend Femi Ogundare, we, we, we remove that man on Monday and he will be replaced. So as, the man, so as the man was going, as the man was going to report him, because the man said he's going to report him on Monday, he was scared. I said, see, I don't, I don't need to pray much because the grace of CTOFM will speak for you. Immediately he got to the working place. They said immediately the, the, the boss saw the man. They told him that they have been waiting to remove him, but now they have remembered to remove the man. They removed the man and they replaced my father. And now he's working well. All to the what? To the glory of Almighty God. All to the glory of Almighty God. A lot of things are, have, are happening. A lot of things are happening, but I cannot even explain. A lot. Amen. And I pray God Almighty we do a lot of things more in my Amen. life than the name of Jesus. Amen. So me, I just came just two years. I just came two years and things are happening. Last, Daddy was preaching yesterday. Someone called me because people were calling me. People were saying this. Thing. And to the extent, to some extent, I get scared. But what keeps me pushing is that I have a father. I have a man. Even though things are happening now, I have, I have someone to run to. That one said to my spirit. A woman called me in the church. In our church, we, we normally pray together. We normally pray together. So as we're praying together, one thing, one, one, I, then nothing that the woman doesn't even know me at all. So they said the husband is sick. The husband happened to be an, a leader in the church, a pastor in the church. So he now said, The husband is now said, What? He now called me and I said, Now he has been at the verge of death that no, nothing, could be, nothing could be done. I said, No problem. I, I, I opened the scripture. I, because first thing I observed from the scripture, when I opened the scripture, I, I saw 4 John chapter 3 verse 8 and I saw some healing scripture. And I said, let them lay a hand up, up, upon the man. And I said, Lady, I've said, there's one experience he got whereby he, he caused someone from the zone of death from the, to the zone of life. And I said, wherever this man's spirit has gone to, the God of Reverend Ogudare, I call for this man from the zone of death into what? The zone of life. And the following, the, the, uh, after some hours, I, I was being called that the man is instantly healed. And the man marvels that, ah, how can this small boy but later when I met him I told him that I am connected what to a man of God I am connected what to a man of God that anytime we people, we people sleep in our, in our own territory we don't sleep that the man has trained us how to use the name of God and he has been using us mightily yesterday when daddy was ministering the woman called me like last week he said an herbalist in their house they are, they are sharing a, 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 a land with herbalist the herbalist live very close to their house that the herbalist that every year, that it, has, it has happened for many years, that every year, the herbalists always substitute sickness from that environment to their family. The husband was almost sick to the point of dying. That the sickness that I prayed for her husband, it was because of that attack from the herbalist. So, and I said, okay, no problem. That what do you want me to do? And I said, we should pray that uh, uh, God should stop the herbalist. And I said, fine, I will pray that God should stop the herbalist. And I said, the, the woman asked me that, who is this man of God that have trained me so much to the extent that I have this boldness to even confront anything that even she is scared that if she retaliate, the man will also retaliate back. I said what? I said I am connected to a man of God. That no matter what will happen, just I have somebody to fall back to. That if it's past my power, I have daddy to go back to. That, so the woman, the, the, the woman said we should pray. And when we pray, the sickness that was being transferred for, for, for a particular time, the man stopped. Nothing happened again. I thought that is the end. Then I said, in the midnight, they will come to the front of their gates. This man I'm talking about is a pastor. They will come to the front of their gates. They will be eating something, like dig down into the front of their gates. The, the, and once they eat that particular thing, the following day, everything will scatter, things will happen. So and I said, no problem. That. What do you want us to do? Because I don't want to tell anybody to die now. I don't want to tell anybody to die. And in the moment, I said, ah, we should just pray that we should stop because some people believe that they didn't need to die, they, they still need to continue the havoc. So the woman has said, ah, now when the case is like this, the man have to go, the man have to pack her, uh, his load and go. I said, what do you mean? He said, the woman have to die. I said, okay, no problem. And that they have taught us that the scripture is anything that we can use to confront anything. I opened the Bible and I opened to, 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 to the place in the, in the book of Psalms, I opened a lot of places and I said, at this particular point, whereby you have agreed that this man to go, 
it is now high time for this man to go, this man to die. So we prayed that night. The following day, they said everybody gathered in that environment. They said, this, this man doesn't die, but the, the man fell sick. And people were now pointing to their family that this is the woman that killed this man overnight. So said, this is the woman that killed the, the abalist. So this woman was scared. The woman called him. The people have been pointing out that now I'm the one who... They now said, these were born people. They came out in the daytime and they make sacrifice. And they said, in as far as this woman wants to take the, uh, the life of these people, and uh, now it is time for us to... So this woman was hearing everything. And this woman called me. And when she called me, ah, I was scared also. I said, let me call daddy. But that now said, what will daddy do in this situation? If daddy is, the, is this one, that's, what will daddy do? And I said, okay, I opened to the jotting of our night vigils. I opened a lot and I, I, I used the scripture. When we used the scripture, they said the man was still living. I said, no problem. That the, the, the man will soon die. As we are now doing that, the following, they said the man is still living. That this, they, will, they will make incantation in the night. Oh, and this woman will come in that night. We, I, will, I will blast in tongue. We pray. We cancel that thing. But lo and behold, on Friday last week, they said the man has gone. They said the abalis has died. But not that died. They said the, the children now stand at the gate. They said, you are the one that killed their father. I said, no, you don't kill their father. The father has passed that boundary. So now they, he needs to go. And I thought, the woman had called me yesterday as daddy was ministering that God is a consuming fire. The woman had called me and said, they have been threatening her that, uh, that she, she's the one that killed her body, that there is a particular boy that he has been praying with. That the, the, him and that particular boy, they have joined forces together to kill the body that now they want to retaliate. I said, no. I immediately as I was going out, I picked the cause. He was saying that, daddy just said in this place that God is a consuming fire. I said, this has said to you so. God is a consuming fire. That anything that comes near fire must be, must be dealt with. I really appreciate God for joining this commission since 2022. And I tell you, things have been working well. People have been calling me from far and near. Someone, so, someone that has someone that been pregnant, whereby, they, I mean, someone that, that, that's having issue in her home, that, that, that when I, I went to Minato to collect my transcript so that we were able to work it to... To foot here. When I got there in my uncle's place, immediately I stayed, my uncle knelt down and said, in this our family, that nobody has ever risen with this kind of anointing. That he really thank God that God is using me and he, sow, he wants to sow a seed. I said, no problem. And I said, but one thing is that the, the woman have not been conceived. That I should pray that God should, should, should remember the woman. And I said, no problem. That, that we will pray. And I said, they have anointing. I said, anointing. So I used the scripture the way that I didn't normally use it. And I prayed and then when I, I said the God of Reverend Ogundari, because I normally use that name because it is the name of a covenant. This is the name Elisha used when he wanted to what? To part the, the, the Bar Jordan. So I said the God of Ogundari will remember this family. And to the glory of God, they have given birth to a bouncing baby girl. I give glory and honor to God. But one thing I learned about that, the, I learned a lot of things. I learned to, to, to use the scripture most. And if someone that will be very close to, to mommy, I tell you, you need patience. It was last, uh, uh, last month. Mommy called me. I, I, I was sweating. So immediately I came back from, she said I should come over. That uh, she wants to, like, we need to go. As when I came, I entered the, the black jeep. I wanted to, because I was, I was, feel, I was, I was very hot. I need, I need cool breeze. So immediately says, I will, I'm going to drive her down to town. I was saying, I thank God that we have that moment to enjoy cool breeze as I was driving. Immediately I entered the car. I wanted to start the car. The car, the car said, K -k 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 -k. I said, ah. I, I told mommy, said, no, and I've not wind down. Mommy said, close the door, do it again. In my mind, I said, wow, this is it already. Let me just do this thing once and for all and go. He said, no, off it again, kick it again. Ah, I was sweating. In my mind, I said, God, can we just open this window and let breeze enter? I did that for three times. And God said, you need to be patient. That this is what we have learned. But daddy gave me one thing that is very, very special to me, which I will say to the whole house. Last month, I mean, last before he traveled, he gave me a cloth. Ah, I so much cherish that cloth to, to, to anything. Because it, according to him and what I've learned about him, he doesn't give his things anyhow. He doesn't give his things anyhow. When he gave me, he said I should come to the house. When I got to the house, he said cloth. Ah, I was very, very happy. When I took the cloth, I said I will make some adjustments to do some certain things with the cloth. As I was going, when I met a tailor by the, the tailor is a Muslim guy. Immediately, I wanted to give the clothes to the Muslim. God told me that this clothes we have not even wear before. You want to give this clothes to a Muslim to repair? I said, no, 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 don't worry. I will, I will manage the clothes like that. 
When I got home, I said, I'll be wearing this. God told me that this is the first gift you have ever received from any man of God, which is from your father, Reverend Ogundari. These clothes, don't wear it. And I said, what will I do? God said, and these clothes in your house. Anytime you are, you, 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 like, things come across your way, you wear this clothes and pray. Lo and behold, when I was uh, at home, that, the following day, I, that, that day that I received the clothes, I put on the clothes, I was praying with the clothes. I was praying with clothes. I, God said I should not wear this clothes. That I should just hang it. Anytime where battle comes, there are some things whereby what you will put on and say, the God of this man. Where is this God of this man? So I, I prayed a lot with the clothes. So the following morning, a sister called me from Mena. He said, uh, they have sent thunder to her sister. Because in Nupe people, they know how to send thunder very well. They, 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 they normally, they, these people are from Bida. They normally, they normally sell thunder. That is where I believe that they, 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 they sell thunder. They would just sell it in Lilo. They buy 15 naira, 100 naira just to keep people. So they now said ah, that they sell thunder to, to, to actually attack a sister. That they have been doing that for many years. That this kind of rainy season, the house will be vibrating. That when thunder strikes, it's really as if it should run mad. That the house will be vibrating, that he was just crying, she was just crying, she was just crying. In myself, I say, What will daddy do? If daddy is in this kind of situation, I say, Okay, no problem. I say, Wait for me. I look for the scriptures and I wear the clothes daddy gave me. I bought it as if I want to go out. I wear it and I said, It's time for us to pray. When he called me, I, and I said, Are you with the phone? He said, Yes. I said, Now it's time for you to pray. I began, I, I prayed for, for her with the clothes. I said, If truly this man, the, I've carried this man to today. God, let, before, before five hours, let this lady call me and said everything has been settled. Because they said they have to take her to, to a psychiatric place to be taken care of her. She's not even normal again. That she, she was just kind of, they, don't, they don't want to lose her. Lo and behold, when I pray with the clothes, I, I, I wore the clothes. I was sweating with the clothes. I said, I will not wash this clothes. Rather to hang it in my, in my room. When you get to my room, it's being hanged. When, when hanged. And I said, no problem. When I pray, I hold the clothes. And I said, in the few hours, you just call your sister. Anything that happened, just tell me. We, within four hours, she just called me and said, ah, the, 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 they said that thunder, that thing that affecting her has stopped. And there's nothing happening to her again. That presently now, she has moved back to her house. That now they are living well. I give glory to God. A lot of things has happened. And, uh, I, and, and, and I want to employ you that to be useful at your early age is very, very important. To be useful at your very early age is very, very important. Like what uh, some um, um, Pastor Toby was saying, say, arise and shine. At times, for us to arise, it may be for our family alone. If David has not, uh, uh, has, has not arose to the mountain to confront Goliath, I'm telling you, Goliath will keep on rowing, up, rowing against them. But when he arose, and how can you arose? It's whereby you stay under a man of God. You stay under a man of God. You stay under the man that carries fire. And when you stay under the man that carries fire, I tell you, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. And I want us to bow our heads to begin to, to appreciate God. Let's just bow our heads to begin to appreciate God for what he has done. Shakadala basuntene basu. Oh, Rabba Katulu, Mushte Bribisi, Talamashta. Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in our days. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Jesus saw some things happen, he said, and he was happy in his spirit that God is using these young people. Woo! So yeah, Jesus was happy in his spirit when he saw the demonstration that the people he sent out were doing. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Let's just wave our hands unto the Lord for what God is doing in our day through everyone that we yield him. Say, ah, ah, by, by, the, by the counsel of God, he has called some people and say they will do this. And at the appointed time, it, it causes them to enter into it. Ah, this is the wisdom of God. It's in the prerogative of God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory for it. Ah, leja braba katala master. For people you choose, your prerogative. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We see these things. We are happy. We are grateful to you. We give glory to you. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's have our seat. <clears throat> our, our brother did not preach. Oh. He didn't preach. He was just giving testimonies. <laughs> How many people we thank God for that testimony? They have not preached. No. Did he, he didn't preach. Did he preach? 
<laughs> I just put some little, little uh, uh, preachings. So I said, well, if you are going to preach, and go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we just seen one. There are many people like that. You know, God, just the wisdom of God, just pick this one. And then, your your turn it for you see your turn it all of by your see and then he will start crying and say ah Jesus is Lord indeed Hallelujah we thank God for that for those testimonies it is God that has done it it's the, and you see so many people supposing I had not come here that um, uh, sixty days that destiny is still there but he needs that joint needs that training. To bring it out, to push him out, and those words, this and this. So supposing I, uh, it's, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. It will still be there. The gifts and calling of God that we done, it will still be there. But God will now look ah, another place. Suppose he didn't come to Akure and say, "Kopa, he didn't come. To, he goes to another place." He, we have heard testimonies of people that they receive healing and they lost their healing because they went back to their church and their church was preaching that the days of healing had passed and they lost that healing and that sickness came back. Is that the will of God? No. God healed them first. But they went back to where they were preaching unbelief. And when they believed that, then that sickness came back. But that's not the will of God. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that in the name of God. We are going to sing one song, but when we finish. You know that song? Heaven on earth, heaven on earth, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Is that not in the temple? Just like heaven on earth. We are going to walk in this world just like heaven on earth. Just like heaven on earth. We have our next uh, minister this morning. Uh, another uh, sister in the house. Another daughter in the house. We... Uh, let me... The introduction, please. Praise the Lord. Uh, another daughter in the house she couldn't minister yesterday her husband used her time <laughs> but and daddy said okay oh, uh, maybe she will come back again or whatever but we thank god uh, daddy has said since there is a little bit more time today that she will come back uh today so i want to give the profile of um mrs sabu um please <laughs> and I didn't. Uh, okay. Thank you. I the particular introduction for Mrs. Abu. I'm going to read the introduction for Pastor Abu because they are one. And then I will say she's the wife of this man. They are doing these things together. That is it because uh, I've been a missionary on the mission field. If a woman does not support you to go to war, <laughs> you know, there's nothing that troubles a man if he sees that if there's no food in the house hmm, or like uh, the suffering of Christ, like Pastor said, <laughs> and you are beginning to say ah, this thing, and your wife is understanding you are saying, ah, no problem, no problem. But if she's not saying, hey, a bit of your own fellow, my man, oh, a bit of your own, one more, one more, one more, one more. There is something about the psychology that man, oh, in fact. He will, he will feel so bad. I don't know how to explain it. If, if he's hungry, he's okay by it. But if he sees that the wife is hungry, he's a little bit okay, not too okay. But if the wife is not com complaining that he's, she's hungry, ah, it will aggravate. If the wife is not complaining, what about the children? What are we? Kill our cause you ah, the man will not be able to gather. He can't think straight. He can't think anything. And it will hinder him in the work. But when you see somebody who uh, they are you know, working it together and it's happening, they are together. They have the same profile before God. Is that not? And of course, he told us yesterday when, that, uh, when Jesus came to his house and said, anointed him, anointed that woman. So they have the same profile. He, she's Mrs. Abu. Let me read quickly uh, the profile of Pastor Abu. Uh, Pastor Mrs. Pastor Abu and his wife, they are devoted missionaries, uh, divinely called and commissioned by God in 20, I don't know when she, 
in a profound encounter, uh, Pastor Shalabu experienced a transcendent moment where he saw Jesus accompanied by two angels, one on the right and one on the left. In his vision, he witnessed three distinct groups launching attacks against against Jesus. The occultic people symbolizing the entire occultic world and its powers. The kings representing ter territorial thrones, authorities, and powers. And the president of nations signifying the authorities and powers of the nations of the world. Each group attempted various forms of attack, both physical and spiritual. However, these attacks proved futile as the weapons fashioned against Jesus hovered over him without causing harm. Jesus in turn directed the onslaught back at these forces, defeating them through the demonstration of divine power. Astonishingly, one of the angels turned to uh, Sholabu and conveyed a powerful message. You now go and tell the whole world that Jesus is alive. And that's what they have been doing. You know, uh, they have done it in the logo. We saw the, um, the picture of the, um, the auditorium, the church that God used them to, uh, to build in the logo. The God has used them to really bring this to power because many powers, if you know a logo, uh, you also know a logo, his logo is in the kitty. There's one shrine there like that. There's one or uh, that only used to come there. You know, that's if I mean, it's just occultic. If you know that place, eh? and it used to be one small town like that before, but God sent them there. Young graduates, you know, you see a young graduate following the husband to a village. These days, uh -huh. He said they will see the man and say, ah, eh, V? Ah, no, I cannot suffer. I cannot. Eh, village? No, 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 no. Let's go to Lekki. Let's go to this. But you see a young graduate who is not a dunce, who is versatile. This woman, I know her, she's versatile. You know, she can do so many things. She, you know, and thank God for her. God, in her own right, God is using her. And then you say, you are just, as you are coming, oh, she's more fleshly. You are just man. You say, your husband say, look, you go to the law, you look good. <laughs> and then you say no problem and you are going there together and you stay there together you give back to your children there together you are there I mean it's, you know it takes grace I think I, I know that that is grace because nobody can do that without grace children of these days some women in these days they cannot do that that's why I remember that you remember one lady that told the pastor that pastor did not even tell her that she was going to he was going to the village he just said that he will do the work of God and I will be my only eh, Amy, Amy, I will fail you. What only shall I buy? That's how that's she's a sister. And this was 1980s, so when Nigeria was still, you know, <laughs> the hundred naira was still more than a uh, hundred dollars or whatever. We, was still, sure, you know, not now. She said, oh, What about now? And then you see a lady, they went to the village, joined with the husband, they faced. You know, all these things that pastor said, they faced them together, they overcame them together, they conquered them together. And I think that is grace. That is grace. And God, she, she, she will have something to share with us. Share in words and share by spirit. Because the things they have handled as a woman now, beside a man, you know, and a woman in her own right, doing, I, I'm sure that, you know, at when you're in the village, if they cannot catch the husband, they want to catch the wife. If the wife is not strong, her. But she's been strong. I know. And she, I know how. But one day she told me, said, there's one woman in the, that village in the Lobo. And that woman, maybe can't talk me. She said, I said, I will eat you alive. You remember that day you told me? Said, I, will, I will eat you. Can you imagine if I start telling that witch that? I will eat you. Was he a revelation or you saw? He said, I will eat you alive. <laughs> that's the that's lion spirit. So you can know that there is no female spirit. There is no female Holy Ghost. He's the same God. And join me this morning to welcome our sister. What do I say now? <laughs> sister missionary, Olushola Christi Abu. God bless you. <laughs> Okay, her teaching is from page 24, right? Okay. Praise the Lord. Daddy and Mommy, I'm so grateful for this rare privilege. Thank you so much, my sir. Thank you so much, sir. Let's pray. 
Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the privilege that you have given me to speak to God's people this morning. Lord, I give you all the glory. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will speak through me this morning in the name of Jesus. That this word will become life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I thank Daddy and Mommy once again for the privilege given to me. I met Daddy in 2012. You know, we're in fellowship in Futaye. So one of our sisters invited me to Dream Center. So we went for the program. It was a living by the answer every Wednesday. So it got to a point in 2012, I think it's January. She now invited me. She said, there's one program that she do attend that I should follow her to the place. I said, no problem. So she invited me to Mosai God, 2012, January. So as daddy was ministering that day, I was looking at him. I couldn't, I, I wasn't myself anymore. What I was just seeing is, I could, ah, there was a neat thing in my heart. As if a, a daughter sees a father. As he was, mini as he was ministering, I was looking at him. It got to a point, I started crying. I didn't know what was, what was making me to cry. And I didn't know what just took me out of my seat. I ran to the pulpit and I held his shoe. I was crying. The brother was like, ah. Daddy said, leave her. I was crying. I was crying. There was a need in my heart. And this is my, f I didn't even know what, I didn't know anything about spiritual fathering. Because I, I had a mentor then, someone that was mentoring me and all that. But I could see a father. I've been attending Dream Center, you know, listening to Daddy, our Daddy Ariogu, living by the answer every Wednesday. But when I came for this Mosai God, I've not been, they have been doing the program, I've been in Futa. They will invite me, I will not answer. You no, know, we are so busy in fellowship, we are the ESCO, this, that, and all that. But that day, when I saw Daddy, I held his shoe, I was crying. And that was how the journey started. Now, in fellowship, I couldn't even attend fellowship. Then I attend the Rim Center, right? But the training started. Unknowingly to me, the person that the Lord has sent to me as my life partner, God is sending him also to Daddy. We didn't know each other. Do we meet in a school of our Greek? But we don't have one on one contact. They call him Pastor there. No, we just know him as normal brother and all that. So the journey started. I was supposed to go to Lagos for my high tea that year. But when, no, Daddy took us through some training. I couldn't just imagine myself leaving the training and say, I want to go to Lagos. I told my friends, I'm not going to Lagos. I'll do it in Futan and Tissue Research Farm. Ah, they were like, ah, they don't pay money, dear. I said, no problem. And my dad normally gave me money once. Once he gives me money, I use it for business. So I didn't plan. I didn't really have it in mind that, okay, I'm supposed to put some money down during my high tea, you know? I spent almost all the money, even with my business, you know, and also, I will also see some other side. But when we started the IT, I didn't have much with me, and I was doing it in Futan Artistic Research Firm, but I, I, I prioritized the training to whatever I would get when I get to Lagos. Then, I didn't have anything on me. We go for IT. You no, know, we do. Then, Daddy would place us on 100 days fasting. We fast, we pray, and all that. I didn't know that God was preparing me for my destiny. And thank God I yielded. You know, one point I want to make out of this is that you may have been with someone mentoring you. I know that maybe it's the person that leads you to Christ or in a church. No problem. But let me tell you, it's, the, it's your destiny that will determine the person that will coach you in life. You are not the one that will determine it. If I have gone by that and say, okay, oh, I've been with someone, the person that was mentoring me is a good man also. You know, is a good man, he loves me, he's a, he's a very pure man, but he can't mentor my destiny. So God sent me to someone that can mentor my destiny, that can father me. And I didn't choose it myself. That I didn't know what, what I was doing. I didn't even understand. It was spiritual. So that it started training us, you know. And no, then I didn't, I didn't have much contact with mommy. You know, we have sisters in the house. So me, I'll just do, I'll just, after early morning. At times I didn't even come for early morning like that because we were so busy in Dream Center also. But I, I knew my father. I knew this is my father. So, like that, like that, like that, the journey started. I met my, my partner. I know that. Got engaged. He told me about his, about his vision. Something about me is this. 
if it is the will of God for me, I don't, I don't care what it will cost me. Though it's not by my power. I, it's just like that is the way God created me. And God has imputed that thing in me from the beginning. That if I know this, since I've given my life to Jesus Christ, if I know this is the will, when I was with me, I live with my sister in Lagos. I was in the church. I was among the Sunday school teacher. To the extent that I, my sisters, I would go for preparatory class. My sister would lock the door and say, after I've worked and worked and worked, work, just preparatory class on Saturday. She would say, I did not cook in the evening. She would lock the door and say, she time to your coach, she I will be begging her, she will be begging her, she will be begging her. We were going to the same church. Oh. I would wake up very early in the morning. I would run to, uh, to prepare the class because I would take Sunday school. I would quickly prepare everything I'm supposed to prepare. So I would meet up. I would trek. They would carry very good. They would come by 9 or 10 to church. Me, I would have trek by 7. That place is very far to church. I knew this is God. I, the love of God was in me. So I, I don't mind. I would just make sure I do everything I'm supposed to do. I made me put in love. She said, my love. So that thing has been in me. That love for God. And it was not me. It was the grace of God. And that was when he told me his vision and everything. I knew, though, summer, summer, I knew I would ma get married to a minister of God, but I don't have the detail. I said, no problem. If that is, if that is what the Lord is, is sending us to do, I am ready. I, I, I'm, I'm ready to go with you. So when the topic given to me this morning is impossible mission made possible. Now, when the journey started, the journey of our ministry, it was so challenging to start out in ministry. Thank God we are under daddy. When it was time, and we have to inform our family members, there are two things that daddy and mommy did for us. They fought for us and they stood by us. They fought for us and they stood by us. You know, when you are trying to tell your family member you just graduated and you say, ah, we want to marry, because before that year, God told uh, uh, my husband, that's why my friend said, marriage, yeah, destiny, yeah, that was 2013. He, call, he called me on phone one night. He said, ah, sister, oh, I had the revelation. God told me that marriage, yeah, this, ah, okay. Check out how she married, you and the both of us laugh it off. We're just making jest of ourselves. So when it was April 27, after we came back from my sister doing this wedding, I want to do Thanksgiving. And the spirit of the Lord moved. And daddy and mommy just called us house and this commissioned us for the ministry. Ah, we were like, we thought that's all. And when the marriage should come, say, you have to go together. I have to get married before you go. It's okay. Ah, we're going to do that. This is Hebrew. Ah. So we just finished our final exam. Not long. So we have to marry. Oh, which mouth will you use to go and tell your mommy? You that just finished your final exam that you want to go and do marriage. Which mouth? Okay, you, you women, you don't even have a problem. Demand. They'll say, ah. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? So when we were fighting the battle, trying to convince them, but if it is God, if it is God, no, nobody can stop it. But let me tell you, if nobody will stop it, you have someone that is backing you up. So when we're telling them, ah, this and this, battle here, especially my husband's side, eh? The mother said, eh, the siblings, eh? Eh, kill on the you know? What do you, what do you want to do? What is this, what is that? And, you know, it got to a point, one of them had to come to daddy's place and come and ask, is it daddy that said we should marry? <laughs> I know that by the time daddy was through with her, she was convinced, wow, no problem. And by the grace of God, we did the wedding and all that. So when we got to the mission feed, that is another battle. Now, one thing. Mission, uh, when, when God sends you on a mission, in Matthew 9, 26, Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. This mission is, seems to be impossible. When we go to Logo, it seems to be impossible. But the Bible says that it may be impossible for man, but with God, it is possible. And in, in Mark 9, 23, the Bible also says, Jesus says to him, if you can wholly believe, all things are possible to him who believe. Daddy normally says something. There's two people that all things are possible for, God and he that believe. There is a faith in me when we were going. I didn't know where that faith comes from. Even through my university days, my journey was a journey of faith. I can't be saying that. So that thing is like God has inputted it into me, and with the training we went through. If not for the training, because during that training, there was a time that it took us through uh, a school, Mission Feed something. That book is still at home. It gave us so many things we can do on Mission Feed, how to, how to be a missionary, 
I remember that course. We did this for a very long time, like maybe two to three months, like that. If that you could remember, early money, we're always there. So we're, it's like a school. So then that thing, I went through it. It was like a, a strength in me. You know, the Bible says if you faint in the day of adversary, adversity, your strength is small. Your strength can be in form of knowledge. It can be in form of wisdom. It can be in form of anointing. It can be in any form. That training was a strength in me. So it's like they've prepared me for the journey ahead, and I'm ready to go. So when we go to the mission feed, it was that faith in me, that, that training and the faith I had in God that gave me strength. You know, when we are doing ad, uh, evangelism sometimes, I do it with, with enthusiasm. I'm so, I'm so happy doing it. I don't go there as a pitied person. You understand? I don't go there as if they forced me. I went there willingly. I followed him willingly. And when we got there, I did the work willingly. When you see me do evangelism, you know these village girls, some of them will be making jests of me. Some of them, no, they don't even understand. And whenever we are praying in a, uh, in a church, you see, they see us pray in tongues. They're like, what are these people saying? Some of them will be... So when you go out to evangelize or to preach to them, it is that uh, tongue that they will be saying, are these people like... I'll just be looking at them, I'll be, I'll be laughing. And I'll tell them, I'll preach Christ to them. I'll tell them how Jesus loved them and all that. And whenever I want to have program, you see myself and one brother will go out to do evangelism, mobilize, and you mobilize that they will come for the program. What gave me strength then is not because, it's not because I want to. There is, there is something that is backing me up. That is a, there is a faith in me. There is something that is producing strength in me. The training I have taken and the faith, I believe that vision. It's not that I have slept one day and I see myself in the logo. Oh no, I believe in this vision because I know this is the man that the Lord has joined me to, and I'm ready to go with him because we are now one. Whatever the Lord has given to him, he has given to me. It was one who saw the vision that they anointed me. I've never seen that they anointed me. I just knew that this is my husband. So that is one lesson we must learn. As a sister, you don't say, ah, this is my own vision. This is what I want to become. Oh, if God is joining you to someone, his vision is your vision. If God is joining you to someone, whatever God has given to him, because it's your head, so you have to submit. Even if you are a man of, you are a woman of God, if God has called you to be a woman of God, you can be an apostle, you can be anything, except God is calling you separately. But if God is giving him a vision that you have to serve under, his vision is your vision, and you must be ready to go with him. So that is it. So when we got there, the faith, you know when God called Abraham, what, what, what moved God in Abraham's, um, in Abraham's, the way Abraham had do what God told him to do was that Abraham believed God. You see, when God called him, he didn't even have an idea of where he was going to. God said, go to where I'll show you. And he just took his wife. And then he took his family member because he was ignorant. And God had to kill his father and, you know, kill, clear some people. And he took his wife and maybe one of his cousins and they were going. You know, can you imagine a grown-up man like that and someone will just meet him on his way and say, oh, Baba, where are you going to? I don't know, but the Lord said, I should go to where he will show me. They'll say, you're a mumu. As old as you are, you don't even have direction. You don't know where you are going to. And God was looking at him then. And he believed God. And he was going. He was going. He was going because God said he should go. That is the mind we had. And for you to be able to accomplish a mission that seems impossible, and to accomplish it, you need to believe God. Just believe him. Faith, that's what you need. God said this, and we're ready to obey. That's all. Just believe God. That faith was what kept us going, and when we got there, and the Lord was... There are some factors that make impossible mission possible. The number one is God the sender. Now, if he sends you on a mission, he will surely back you up. It will surely back you up. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7 to 8, he said, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to her that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. If the Lord send you on a mission, he will back you. He will never leave you. You know, in Matthew 28, verse 20, he said that, I am with you, even to the end of the age. I am with you. God is always with us. He will never leave you. If he sends you, he will back you up. He will back you up. He will not leave you. Don't be afraid. 
don't be afraid. For someone to, to accomplish an imposs- a, a, a mission that seems impossible, you have to know God the sender, that it is God that is sending me. When you are in the tunnel, initial and bear, I can bear in the tunnel. You are not afraid. You are just. You are not afraid of someone. You are not afraid of who the person sent you to. You are just just to be afraid of someone that the person that sends you. You understand? Just know if you know the God, the sender, the giver of the vision, the sender, you you, you will be strong. And if you know that he, he will always be with you, you will never be afraid. God will never leave you. Is Oran Manisha Fayati? Is how he will be always. It will always be there for you. So God the sender. You must know God the sender. If God sends you on a mission, he will never leave you. He sent Jeremiah. He said, I should not look at their faces. You should not be afraid of their faces. Go and deliver the message I have given to you. And that was what we did. We just know that God is sending us and we are ready to go. God the sender. He can never leave you. You know, that woman was trying to say a testimony. You know, there was a place we used, that one of the places we rented, for our mission center, and that place that there, there was a woman there, a wish, and the shy too. We don't even know if that one is a wish, but that one is a very catacleros woman. The ma- mama and the shy. The woman is selling one uh, igbo and, and selling alcohol and all, all that. So there was a day this woman came to the front of our church. You know that place have a very large expanse of land. So then when we got there, we cleared everything. That place was neat and all that. The, the front of the building. This woman is not the uh, mama or the child. She's also a grown-up person. She has even given us a child that is in um, secondary school. So she just planted a goosey at the front of our church without our information, without informing us. So the thing started growing. We now, we now notice that something is growing. The person now said, ah, who planted a goosey here? Pa- pastor said this. So that they were here. The time that the pastor was saying this, I believe the woman had. She just kept quiet. She's looking for trouble. So pastor said, who, who planted a goosey here? Nobody talk. He left it for some weeks, and he's like, ah, we are going to be growing at the front of the church, and I'll be looking at it. He just went to the place and pulled out one of it in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, everybody. Go and pull it out. And they pull it out. So the next day, maybe the next day or the, second, the third day, we are about, we are to have a Bible study. So, we, and pastor was even fasting then. So as we got down from the back, the woman just said, yeah, you like, are you the one that uproots the egusi I planted here? Ah, Pastor said, I've been announcing who planted egusi here. Nobody answered me. So I have to, and this is the front of the church. So I have to uproot it. Eh? If, if the woman now started saying, You understand? It was like, Pastor was like, What was the meaning of this one? He now said, He now made the statement. He said, Pastor will live as a poor and a disgraced person in this land. Ah. Pastor said, eh. <laughs> okay, you have, you have made a mistake. He, he just made one statement and entered into the church. The mama has been looking for a way to take my first child. I will see her in the dream. She wants to take, I'll say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. It's got to a point. God now gave me a revelation about her. She's a wish that has put so many destiny under her. She's a wish that has killed so many people. And God showed me those people that she has killed. They were standing far away. Some of them have not been killed, and, but their destiny has been sat on. It doesn't allow them to, to shine. It doesn't allow them to, to manifest in destiny. So all of them were throwing stone at her, throwing stone at her. And I went to her, and the Lord now showed me who she was. Scorpion, serpent, she was full of... It's, it's not a image now. I just saw scorpion, serpent, as if you put many scorpions and serpent together to form a whole woman. She was on her bed. And I went to her, and I, and I pressed her neck. I said, I will kill you! I will kill you! In the name of Jesus, and the vision was lifted. So later we went to our site, we left the place. Now we don't even know what has happened to them. It was early this year that I was asking of one of our members. So we're going for mobilization. And I told our blessing, one of our members, I said, ah, you know, we use this thing sometimes, I know that. And said, ah, this house, why are, are people not living there? It's like he said, ah, the people there have died. I said, hey, ooh. He said, the mama, I said, what of the child? She said, the child have died too. Eh? Both of them have died. Because they locked the, the place. There, there, there was nobody living there. Ah? So the mama have died. The daughter have died also. She said, yes. I said, eh? It is well, oh. So I just. <laughs> so when I got home and I told Pastor, I said, 
ah, you can't believe what I had today. He said, she said, he said what? I said, do you know that place that we use? We call it a former bank. She, he said, yes. I said, the mama have died. The daughter have died. Oh, but so fair for them. Say, oh, God. <laughs> so, and that is it. So, God is saying that God will always back you up if he sends you on a mission. No matter how impossible it seems, all he needs is for you to just believe him. Just believe. He has sent me. I'm ready. It, it will surely be accomplished. This, number two point is that God will use a man as a covering for you. You know, don't just think people are coming here to talk about daddy and mommy because you want to we want to make them happy. No, we are saying the truth. That is what they have done to us. That, that, that is what the Lord has used them for us. God using a man as a, as a covering. Let's open our Bible to Hester chapter 2, verse 7, 11, and 20. Please, can I have it? Esther chapter 2, verse 7. And he brought up Adassa. That is, Hester is. Okay, 7. And he brought up Adassa, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she has neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful. Whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Let's go to verse. Sorry. 11. Verse 11. Verse 11 now. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Let's go to 20 now. Verse 20. Esther had not yet shielded herself, kind, her kindred, nor her people, as Mordecai has charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai. Like as when she was brought up with him. Can you get it? It took, I want to see to be that 20. Esther had not yet shielded her kindred nor her people as Mordecai has charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as she was brought up with him. That was what happened to us. You know, Daddy has taken us through some training when we were with him. When we go to the mission field, we walk strictly. You know, we learn, especially my husband, I learn so many wisdom from daddy. He learns so many wisdom. Everything we do, we do it as we have been taught. You know, youth of nowadays, sorry to say, not all, but some. You know, there, this zeal of, you, know, you understand, there is uh, charismatics and others. When we got there, that place is not, a, who do you want to go and show that you are charisma? Is it these village people? <laughs> I do not even see you. But what the Lord sent us to do in the land majorly is the demonic stronghold to deliver the people from the demonic stronghold. Because that land, Ilobo, controls the whole local government of Idosi. Idosi local government. The idol they are serving in Ilobo Ekiti, our branch in Ido, our branch in Nusi, our branch in Igole. It's like, it's like a church that have branches all around. Have you seen where idols have branches? I mean, they have the same form of, you know, like winners now. If you see winners building, you know that this is a winner. No matter how small it is, that's how they do it. The Igoro is the same. If you get the, to the Igoro, the way they design it is the same. They will have fence. So I don't know. <laughs> it's a very, very funny thing. So they have branches all around, and they call it Olua. The first day we entered into that land, April 27, the Lord exposed the name of the idol to us. We were just praying, and we were hearing Olu, Olu. So when the woman that accommodated us came, we asked her that is there anybody bearing it? Ah, is the idol they are, they, are, they are serving here? Whenever they are serving that idol, people come from all over the world. I mean, this Hakure here, if they are doing their Olua festival, they know it looks like If you say that the, the day they, are, they celebrate it, people will come, shatter bus from Hakure. Because anytime we are going to Hakure, we logo from this place. If, if you say we are going to logo, ah, they say, ah, I'm more better. Ah, King is about to do my body. I'm not going to go along. Eh? Myself and my husband said, what's the more be? So they are very popular. People will come from abroad, big people, you know, big vehicles. The place will be jam packed with people. So it's, a, it's, a, it's like international demo. So they know it worldwide. So, and whenever they are celebrating it, only of Ife do attend every year. Because we heard that only of Ife, 
I don't know how true it is that when they wanted to, the mother was looking for the fruit of the womb, so they have to come to a logo and maybe then they receive the fruit of the womb of this man called Honey of Ife now. And when, when, when he wanted to become the Honey of Ife, he came to the place also and he made some covenants and he was able to become the Honey of Ife. So every year they celebrate that festival. It's always there. Till date. So he will just come in the night and leave ne the next morning. That is Honey of Ife. There was a time he came. He came to attack us and God delivered us from his hand. <laughs> so they said at that night, when they came, they entered into our house in the spirit realm. My husband, he said, by the time they launched the attack, he couldn't talk. He was, his, all his body has been paralyzed. That was just trying to pray. He prayed in tongue in the, in the spirit realm till he was able to open his mouth and pray out. And that was his, when his body now became active. And now, I just woke up. We were chasing, <laughs> we were chasing them in the spirit as if we were chasing people in the physical. Out, 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 out. We just because maybe they've tried all they could and they couldn't get us. When of Nick came, they just reported us. Say these small, small uh, girls and boys are disturbing us in this place. Help us to deal with them and all that. And God gave us victory. But one thing I want you to know is this: we yielded to the commandments, the instructions, the counsels, the wisdom of Daddy. You know, sometimes, some things will come up. We won't be able to handle it. But that's why we call daddy. Sometimes we will feel discouraged because of the challenges. But that's why we call daddy. If, in fact, sometimes we have to pack our children. In fact, all the children we give back to, we give back to them in the hand of mommy. Praise the Lord. Anytime we want to give back to our three children, we don't stay there to give back. Daddy, say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Buzz it by. We call. Even the last one. We were trying to like, okay, that is that is said, are you coming to Akura and others? So we, are, we will come and others. But the way we are still uh, doing is that, should we give us to in this place? Should we go? But when it's over, like, don't you have know, like her? Uh, the first one. <laughs> the second one. You want to prove smart. Now yeah, we just, we just carry our load. We are not alone. We are not alone. The, my first child, if not that God has put us under daddy and mommy, I could have died. I could have is it even the child? When, myself. When I, after I gave birth to the child, I literally died. <laughs> because I saw my, because I, I, my strength was half. I just, I saw myself going, mm, I, I had mommy, come back! Come back in the name of Jesus! My husband, everybody were praying, I know that. If, not, if, if, if I don't have people like that, in my, I would have died. I would have died. And one, one point I want to make is this. This divine calling delivered me from course. It's deli you know, people will like, oh, Sister Christy, you try, you follow this uh, brother to Ilogwe Kit. I know that. If I have died, you know? Hmm? Because when I wanted to get married, my <laughs> stepmother wanted to kill me. And his, his daughter went for it. My, on my wedding day, my father was money. She wanted to kill me. It was my husband that saw it. He said, the pain, the pain, the day, can pray. When we were cutting, and we just prayed that night. Um, the next thing we hear is that my half sister have died. So if I if if I say it's one big man I want to follow because of material thing, is it not the person that is alive that will follow the big man? If I didn't choose the path of the calling, I could have died. So whenever I remember all this, I didn't I didn't give myself any glory. I'm just be privileged to be used by God. It's a rare privilege. Though it's not, it may not be convenient, it may not be sweet, but one thing that gives me joy is this. I said, no matter what I go through on heart, no matter what I face, one thing I'm after is I want to fulfill my destiny. Because it is, the more you do, the more the reward in heaven. And I normally tell people, I say, if you carry a great destiny, that will be after you. I face a lot of attack. A lot of attack. Emotional attack, sicknesses, so many things. And God healed me. There was a time I had to come to daddy. He prayed for me. I was, I, I was, you know, I was harassed emotionally. I mean, in the spirit realm. And God delivered. I knew what the devil was after. He doesn't want me to fulfill my destiny. I told the devil at, if, at, at his face, I said, I will, this destiny, I will fulfill. I know you're after my destiny. I will not go to heaven empty-handed. And that has been my aim. Doing the work, I'm doing it with heaven in view. I knew there is a reward waiting for me in heaven. And the devil wants to cut short my reward. In eternity. I said, devil, you will not cut short. I will stay. You know, that is said, we'll be here for a very long time. And that is the covenant I'm hanging on. I can never die. So that is the, it is a privilege. It's not that uh, I'm a great woman like that. Or no, there's an understanding that I have that any opportunity you have to serve the Lord, especially if you carry a divine calling, 
is a very rare privilege because it is something that gives God joy and your reward is in heaven. The Bible says that there is a joy in heaven over his soul that's what? That, 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 that repents. So if you are now called to do the work of soul winning, that is, that is your work. You know how many joy you are giving to heaven. You know how many joy and you know there is a reward waiting for you in heaven. Praise the Lord. So we yielded to the instruction and the counsels of our father. And the training that he has given to us gave us the strength to be able to do the work. That is it. We yielded to it. And secondly, our father stands stand as a covering to us. He stands as a covering to us. Let me tell you, we are, not, we are not exposed. We can never be exposed because daddy, the Lord has put daddy in, into our life. And the, the, the devil couldn't get us. It's not because we, we are that anointed. No, because there's somebody that God has put. You know, my mother said yesterday, he said, if you see, even if that, it was daddy that taught us that if you see a small child that go to, to an head other person and just slap the person. Bah! You know that there's someone behind that boy that is giving that boy goodness. That if you know that, if, if you touch that boy, I will deal with you. It is, it is that deal. It, I normally tell people, I say, we are not alone, no. We are not alone. No. It's not because we are both hearted. Look at my, looking at my husband naturally, he's not a kind of person like that. But because of the word of the father, he encourages him. When we come, at times we leave Ilogo, we pack our, our things and carry our children. We will come to Akure to come and stay with that. When the battle is fierce, we have to just relocate. Bah! You understand? So those are, you no, know, there was a time when uh, Jesus Christ was born and God told them to, leave, to take him to Egypt. It's not because God was timid though. God used su such wisdom. You know, some people like, ah, oh, anoint, oh, anointing, oh, tola, anointing, oh, selfish. It's not that you are, you are running for the devil. It is wisdom. Is God, is God timid? No, it is wisdom. And those are the wisdom that the Father has taught us and we are walking by. So that is, God used daddy as a spiritual covering for us. God used that anything we just call him, we pray, we break through. Ah, this is happening. Daddy will pray. Bah! You know, there was a time we saw something on the land. That, you know, that mommy was giving the testimony yesterday. You know, we were just walking and we saw it. It was like a sword, like something like cutlass or a sword like that. This whole time thing. And they just, they dig it, they put it into the ground and one fits to the ground. There's a very big pot. So when we dig the thing, we saw the sword, we remove it. There's one black thing on it put it down. So we're digging, digging, digging and they saw the very big pot under and they remove it and they broke the pot. Call that, this is what we saw another. That is said we should get anointing away. And he prayed and just destroyed it like that. Lo and behold, that same sword, the devil, that demon brought it, wanted to come and use it against my first child. And the Lord opened the eyes of the servant of God and he went and stopped it. You understand? So that we didn't do it alone. When we were destroying it, do we destroy it alone? Do we destroy it alone? No. Call that it. And he said, just get it with the backing. So that's something you, you there is a you know, there's a we battle, there is high battle. If not that God has put him in his life, in our lives. You know, my husband was telling you things that has happened to the men of God that came to the land. You know, it is hard, it is it's it's painful. When we remember such things, on booze us. What 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 kill off it better John, when people in kill off it better you want, you could see that the difference between it is that we have a spiritual father. Praise the Lord. I want you to help me to give daddy a round of applause and mommy. Daddy and mommy, thank you. You are very grateful. Thank you so much. Now, another thing is that obedience to God's instruction. Obedience to God's instruction. You must, you must pay attention to God's instruction. This is how you should do it. This is how you should do it. There was a time, you know, we normally go out for evangelism. There was a time, the Lord opened the eyes of my husband. He told him, this evangelism you are doing, you know, they've tried this... In her way, they couldn't get you. They will rob you. And they will chase your family, you and your family out of the land. So God gave him the revelation where they would do the thing. They would just, it's, it's like a trap that they would use to trap him. And there are some abominable things you must not do in the land. You understand? So they would just like set the trap. And maybe when he passed through the place, they would just say he's the one that did it. And they would just send us. Because that was what they did to Obadari when he, when he went there years ago. God showed him that this is the next, this is the next plan of these people. Do you know what we did? We just stopped evangelizing for that time. We just, eh, we are not, for now, oh, <laughs> we are not going for evangelism. So we sat at home, just go for our program normally. So they have, you know, they have tried so many. To the extent that I saw it that after they have roped him, they just sang for us and sent us out of the land. You understand? So keep you, at obedience to God's instruction. 
if the Lord give you instruction, this is the way you should do it, this is the way you should do it, just make sure you keep, you just keep to the instruction. Obedience to God's instruction. In heart, that's in, that, can, that can be seen in Hearts 26, verse 19. Another thing is self-denial. If you want to make an, if you want to embark on an, a, a seemingly impossible mission and you want to be successful in it, you have to deny yourself. You have to get rid of your self-ambition, get rid of your, of, your, of your pride, get rid of whatever is your own personal will. You have to submit your will to God. No, you have to, you have to leave everything. Be ready to go all out for God. You understand? You know, we have ambitions. Everybody has his own ambition. Everybody has whatever he wants, what, what he has planned to be in life. But if God is giving you such assignment, if he's sending you on a mission, you have to get rid of everything. Myself and my husband, we went there full, full time. It's not that I couldn't do this. If I had tried, it fails. I tried so many things, it doesn't work. Because God wants to teach us the way of faith. Because the assignment is given to us, it's not the assignment that we can say we want to work and do. How much do you want to use to finance it? He wants to teach us, teach us the way of faith. He wants us to rely on him totally. The road was not easy. But one thing is that self-denial every day. One thing, one, the most important thing that, you know, once give me joy is that I see him do the assignment with rest of mind. That's what gives me joy. I may be going hungry. I may not, you know, I may not have this, I may not have that. I, I try to control. I'm, I'm, as, I, as I am, I'm a very emotional person. But yet, I try to control myself, not to let him see me. You know, I don't, I don't want to take a posture as if he's punishing me or as if I'm going through things. Because I know he, he himself will not feel okay. Because his plan is that when he finishes a PhD, we just go and marry one beautiful girl that her leg will not touch the floor, that she just be pampering. You understand? So, but the, our, his road was not designed like that. So, and God just, it's just like a, a grace. So if I just think of some things and maybe because of what I'm going through, I'm not, not feeling okay, you know, and I'm just going through some emotional things. For me, instead of me to go and react, I'll just go to God. Because I know if I ask her, I just say some, it will affect him. And if, if you, if a man of God that is not having rest of mind, will not be sensitive in the spirit. Will not, be, will not be able to carry out the assignment the way God wants him to do it. He will be worried, especially as that mommy have said, as if that mommy, uh, mommy uh, and the grace is from mommy. Because mommy give me things very well, especially clothes. So that grace, oh my Rob, sorry, me dada. I took that grace from her because what can make mommy? Ah, me, mommy still try, oh. It, mommy had masters when mommy went to a shop. In fact, that is an inspiration for me. I'll say, Kiwa Nika Sati, mommy, she me ni masters ni. She be mommy shan ni masters. Praise the Lord. Abi, she be mommy shan ni masters. Mommy came from a very rich family. She has been driving uh, before 20. She me didn't drive with me. I won't be on my own. You don't get it. So that serves as an inspiration for me. When I remember her, sometimes I say, eh, 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 kilo wa shetan ya kou shiri. Eh? Are you, is it not for you? Is it not for yourself? When they are giving you the reward, are you going to share it with another person in heaven? So, count it as a privilege. So, mommy is an inspiration to, to me. And the grace has robbed on me. So, I don't want anything that will disturb my husband in doing the work. So, at times I may want to drag and like this and that. But I don't do it in such a way that we disturb him to death. So that we will not be sensitive. Because where we are, he need high sensitivity. High sensitivity. And I thank God for that grace. God gave him that grace. And I'm always very careful. Not to, and the devil is always bringing attack to me to go and affect him. But I was like, ha. Would really he will be worried. And if he's worried, he won't be able to pick things in this place. He won't be able to even do the work. It will even pause the work. So in heaven, they will see me pay me more pause the share. No. No, that's I'll just be preaching to myself, trying to console myself, trying to tell myself, don't do that, it's not okay, and all that. And that was, you know, self-denial. You know, that is flesh. Your flesh wants to react. Your flesh wants to do this, but at times God gave me the grace to just cup the flesh and say, Oh. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. And another point is, you know, this denying self, let's go to Luke chapter 9, 23 to 24. Jesus said, if you want to save your life, you will lose it. If I'm trying to save my life there, you know, I can do some things that will expose us. Are you guessing me? I can do some things that, the, the attack, if, if I allow strife because of what I'm going through, if I allow, I allow offense because of what I'm going through, I can open it up for the devil. And the same thing that, have, that caught up with those people will have, will have, come to, will have happened to us. 
So I just I just decided to close the door. So if if I'm trying to like put into myself, I want to satisfy myself, I may eventually expose our family. So that's why Jesus Christ, if you want to save your life, you will lose it too. Anyone that will follow me must carry his cross and follow me. So I see it as a cross that I will bear. And I'm praying to God every day that God, please help me to bear this cross. And I know you cannot follow God. God is not a user of man. It's not like human beings. After you use cloth and use and use and you tear and you use it too. No, that's not our God. He's not a user of man. Even if you are not expecting anything on this heart, things that we give you to cushion you for the ministry, people will envy you. Because that's what the things that people are working for. People live to die. They live to hit. They live, you know, you know things, things, the, the things that people are living for are mundane things. And when you have gone through a stage, it's not because uh, No. The assignment is in need of jet, and God gives to you. And that's what natural people are looking after. And that's what they will see and hear you and say, hey, you're not a big man. Hey, God has really rewarded you. No, it's not really rewarding quote. It's something that is in there for the ministry. It's something that is in there for, just to push you, to make you to do the work effectively. And that's what earthly people are living for. So eventually, you will see the glory of the Lord. They will see the glory of the Lord. So living a sacrificial life, you need to live a sacrificial life for you to make this impossible vision to be possible. You know, God, when you talk about supernatural, we are talking about super and natural. Is that it that said, you say, when you see something supernatural, it's not that God come from heaven and do it. You know, so in the Old Testament, we can see something like that. But now, God needs a man to do it. And that man must be ready to be sacrificial. He must be ready to live a sacrificial life. Don't cons- consider your convenience, but the assignment, I've said it, do the work in season and out of season. That is Second Timothy 4 2. And be people oriented. Be people oriented. You forget about yourself. When you get to mission feed, you forget about yourself. You are nobody. You throw away your ego. You throw away your personal ambition. You throw away whatever you have. You just, you say, okay, a graduate. So I'm going to be showing them there. I'm a graduate, Abby. Who sees you? In fact, they even make jest of any poor, oh, Nishani, Kilo and What are you? Are these two people crazy? They said they are graduate. What are you looking for in this village? So there is nothing honoring to them like there. So the only thing they just see is people that does not know what they are doing and come. But by the time God is, was through with them, they knew that actually God has come to town. So, you know, in that land, there are so many things that happen. When we enter into that land, there are so many, you know, so many funny, funny things. They will say, ah, this road is one Baba that stopped them from doing it because they have one hotel beside the road. Eh, there's one road that go, the, no, federal road is supposed to pass through that land. They stopped them from bringing this federal road there. And when we got to town, one of the persons that got clear is that Baba. We are doing crusade one day. And Pastor just pray. So, 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 so. All those people that doesn't have want the good of this land, all of them, God will clear them in Jesus' name. The people say, Amen. Mm-hmm. So, in the night, before, we now did whole night after that uh, crusade. It was the next morning that one of the members, uh, one of our team just came and said, Hey, 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 Pastor, it has happened again. You know? He said, What? Ah, that Baba that did not want them to do that road have died. And the one who went us to die, he said, Ha, ah, this kind of death that is coming to take him is Akufao. That they should go and call his uh, son. He should put one thing in one hotel like that. He should put another thing there. So that after he has gone, all his family member will not die. You see? You, you know that uh, something has come upon him. Something has come against him. And when God entered into that land, he cleared all those Hokoti people. You know when they say, ah, yeah, there is demon in the town. Oh, don't come out. Oh, oh Roman Ben oh. is, is it the Oro that will catch them? You know that you say that no demon will come and come and carry you. Somebody that is behind that Oro. Those people that, is, that are behind those things, all of them died. Today, they said that they, they gathered together and started praying against death. The death was so much. They were just dying. They were dying. Today, some of them will die. They will not live down. They will say, I want to do Rimbio. Hey, I want to do Rimbio. It's so occultic. They died. After they, they have died, hey, you see. Today, they said that God did this, that after they died, one of their sons wanted to go for rape. And that person is, is not a born again person, he's a, a Catholic. But because God wants to show himself that he has come to town, he spared the life of that man. That man was supposed to be assassinated. And when we were doing crusade, God showed it and all that, he delivered him. He didn't even come for the crusade. The pastors were like, ah, we know the person you are talking about. Hey, maybe pastor should go to his house. Pastor said, I don't go to people's house. I'm just holding program and the word of knowledge has come. Don't worry, God will deliver him. And the man later won the election. It was the man that now 
went in, in the federal level and said they should come and hope. The, the, the road that they are supposed to have done, that that Baba did not allow them to do, they now did this. It was that road now, and now passed through our ministry center. And so our ministry center was at the front of the road, main road, that leads to the main town. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You have to have faith in God. Say faith in God. You have to have faith in God. God took us through the journey of faith. You know, if God has not taken us through the journey of faith, you know, as I just imagine ourselves, that's what would have become of us. Though it was not convenient at first, it was not convenient. Though. It was so, you know, it was like a suicide mission. <laughs> you know, I can't say it here. It's, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I don't have expression for it. But God took us on, a, on the journey of faith. And what God wants us to learn is this. You know, my husband was saying this yesterday. He said, you can have favor with God. That you need favor with me. You need favor with me. And I will not be shy to say this. Though, one thing is this. We give to God, as my Egina uh, uh, said yesterday, we give to God as a mind of assignment. That this is an, as a Christian, you give to God as something that is like, is a righteous deed. You don't feel righteous when you don't give. You feel, you feel unrighteous. Just like you don't feel righteous when it's like a godly thing. You, you don't feel righteous when you don't pray. You don't feel righteous when you don't read your Bible. That's how giving is. And secondly, when you give to God, it attracts forces. It makes um, you to have favor with men also. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that is God took us through the journey of faith and giving. You understand? So, and by doing this, no matter how small it is, initially we don't even have anything to give. You see, I don't even have something to you that I'll be giving. But the little, we just we started it little by little, little by little, little by little. To the extent that it got to a point, myself and my husband say, Wa, Toba Jekpe, 50 50, Lama Machine. We didn't even tell that you. We are just doing our own. Sometimes that you say, Is this time? I said, No, it's it. <laughs> we just splash it and let's say, We say the way, anyhow, we want to do the rest of the month. We do it. Though it's small, very small. But we now learn that road. We now see that it works. It works. So, praise the Lord. So, God was teaching us the way of faith that you cannot do this work without relying on me on every aspect. You can rely on God for anointing. You can rely on God for this, but you must also learn to rely on God on your financial provision. Because anointing without money will lead to annoyance. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the living Jesus. Learn to hear God. Very, very crucial. For you to, for you to accomplish an impossible uh, mission for you to make for you to accomplish it and be successful you must learn to hear god you must learn to hear god that one is not me is god has given my husband that grace to hear him and that he taught us if there's one topic that i know that he taught us so much is how to hear god we know it you know so many ways how to hear god and it's a grace if you are in the house and you are blind you don't know how to hear god something is wrong you must know even myself as little as i am in my only two ways, it's in rub on me, and I enjoy it. Praise the Lord. You must learn how to hear God. It's very, very, very crucial. You know, the devil may be planning an attack, plotting an attack, and that person is blind, doesn't even know what is happening. You know, you must learn how to hear God. Okay, this is the next phase of the assignment. You don't know. Someone can be in the assignment and don't have the details of the assignment and be doing another thing. You know, that's that's very dangerous. You say, okay, ah, he's doing, uh, he's, in, he's doing the assignment, but. He doesn't even know that he's doing the wrong thing. You know, uh, I read Kenneth Hagin's book. He said, after maybe 14 years, the Lord has said he has not even started the first chapter of his assignment. So that is one of the importance of hearing God. You must learn how to hear God. Awareness. What should I do next? How should I go about it? What is the details of my assignment? It's very, very crucial. We must learn how to hear God. Because it will get to a point. If you are supposed to have, go to the next phase and you are not going, it will be somehow frustrating. Praise the Lord. So we must learn how to hear God. And we must pray without ceasing. Prayer is very crucial. You know, prayer on the mission field is different from normal Christian prayer. That's okay, I'm a Christian. It's 24 hours prayer. Even when you are not opening your mouth, you are praying. Because you are very sensitive. You know this place? There are so many things that happen that I can't even say. So many things. So many miracles, so many things. But what I want to focus on is the work. That's how to know how to be secure. You know, I've told you, number one thing is God. You must know God and the spiritual father. You yourself, you must, you must learn how to hear God and be very prayerful, be very sensitive. We don't mix up with them. 
You don't eat their food. We don't take their things. No matter how hungry we go, we don't go there and go and be begging for bread or for... No, we are so... The wisdom that the Father has given to us, we are so disciplined. We are so, you know, we, we separated ourselves. We don't miss up. Even our children. When we come from the place, we, don't, we, we can't believe that we come from such place. And by the grace of God, God has been so faithful to us. Our children is not lesser than people that are even in our brood. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. So, and lastly, be patient. Be patient. You know, uh, there is one adage that said that a house is not built in a day. And the Bible talks about those people that receive the promise with patience. Those people, they are men of faith. If you carry a divine calling yeah, in Habakkuk, he said that if you run, the, if the race will not tarry, if you run, the vision will come to pass at the appointed time. He said it will not tarry. He, first of all, he said that it, it's like if it will tarry you, but it will not tarry. You have to be patient. When it seems as if time is going, why, what am I doing? Why are things not going the way it should be? You, you may want to back out and say, ah, things are not working now. It's as if I'm stagnant. It's as if things are not working. What you just need with, with God then is just to be patient with him. If you want to work with God, you need to learn the way of patience. If you are a kind of person that wants to de- do things in haste and get results, you know, this sharp, sharp way of this time, you know, cut corners, you will miss it. So you have to be patient with God. This is just follow him step by step. This is what God wants me to do now, and that's what I'm doing. This is where God wants me to be now, and that's where I'll be. There was a time myself and my husband made the decision with God. We said, God, if we are mouths with nothing in this calling, we will not back out. We told God then. We said, Possibly, no matter what happens, even if it is this in Logo that we die in, it's a, we will not back out. One thing is that we are ready to follow you to the end. We are ready. And when we got to that point, it was as if something broke up. So we are ready to, you know, that patience was there. We're not trying to cut corners. We're not trying to use prophecy to collect money from people. We're not trying to use, no, just trying to do some funny, funny things. You know, as some people will like, you know, we just stay with God and say, God, Whatever you want to do, we are ready for you. We are ready. You must be patient with God. You must be patient with God. If it is God-given vision, he will surely accomplish it. No matter how impossible it seems, he will surely accomplish it. No, Abraham. Abraham was the only one. It was 100 years that he even got the first issue. That is the, the, the covenant child, Isaac. He was patient with God. If God wants to work with you and do such a, that mission that seems impossible, you have to take root downward. It's like a house that we have a very big, um, that, we, that will be very tall. You have to have roots that goes down. The foundation will be very deep. It will be very deep. And that is what God told me one time. I was like, why am I? Why me, God? Why me? Look at this. Look at this. Why me? God told me, he said, you don't understand. He said a house that will be very tall. We have a very deep foundation. And he told me that, and I heard that word. So be patient with God. That kind of assignment, we have to be patient with God. And that's what has helped us. That patience, say, he that, he say, he that believe it doesn't make haste. If you really believe, that is in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. If you really believe that this is God-given vision, and you believe that God is with you, ah, can an earthly father send you and say, okay, well, go and buy something for me. And maybe they are frying their kara. And the Akara is like, people are many there, and you are queuing, you are queuing. But that it, your father has told you, make sure you bring the Akara home. What you have to be, you do is that, will you get there and say, people are many there, just go back. That the people are many there, I cannot buy. No, trust me now, to be my later. You just have to wait, be patient until it gets to your turn. You buy it and you go and give it. That. That's how the divine assignment is. Be pay- no matter all the obstacles on your way, just make sure. My father has sent me and I cannot go back to him. Empty and dead. What will I say happen to me? I must accomplish the mission. So just stay there. Be patient. This is what you see. Even when you miss it, you will get it right later. You will get it right later. Just be patient with him. And that's what can help us to succeed and make the seemingly impossible mission possible. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. Now, there's something I want to do very, very quick here. That, you know, you may have, Daddy and Mommy, please, you can sit down. You may have a mentor. Maybe you are, someone leads you to Christ and all that. You know, at least my mentor and all that. Maybe you have been in one place, but you, when you enter into this place, there is a neat thing. You know, you had the testimony of how I met Daddy. 
there was a knitting in my heart that this is my father. You can be on ground, you can be online. I want you to make the decision. See, spiritual father is not something you do with your head. You can't decide who will be your fa earthly father. You just come. But this one, you need God direction also. It's not that we decide by your head. But there will be a knitting. You know, anytime you see that, you're like, ah, this man, there's something about this man. Ah, there's so you may not be able to, you may not see vision. You may not understand, but there is something that is drawing. There is a drawing in your heart that is drawing to him. So I want to, I want to encourage you to take the right decision. Especially if you carry a great destiny. Especially if you carry a calling. God has, has raised daddy up to coach people in this hand time for divine calling. And daddy has raised so many songs. You know, it, that is an inspiration for us. It's an encouragement. No matter how discouraged we are on the mission field, when we, when we, when we, when we remember daddy, ah, myself and my husband will say, ah, oh, if daddy can go through it. Ah, no, 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 no. What is our own? What are we, what are we facing? That is a strong man. That is a very strong man. So, he's a man that God has raised for this generation. He's not, he's not, he's not, in fact, if, praise the Lord, I don't know, I don't want to say some things. Praise God. So, if, if there is a need in your heart, I want you to make the decision. God has raised him for us in this end time. He's the one that God used to pass for some callings. Callings that are not common. Some callings that are not common. I want you to raise, rise up and make the decision. And make the decision before it is too late. I want you to make the decision now before it is too late. And if you have been the son, I want you to pray for God. To God that God should help you. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You can have your seats. I just have one or two things to put in before we finish. Uh, it looks a little extended today because I want to make sure we cover everything that we're supposed to cover. And by the time it's getting to weekend, some more people will come who only like weekend. And then some more people will not be able to come because they are preparing for their Sunday. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So that's why I'm doing, I'm doing my job. So don't mind that I'm stretching you. I'm just making sure I do all that I'm supposed to do because I have a master who is marking my scripts, whether I did all that he sent me to do or I did some, I left some. Praise God. Are you hearing me? Uh, but there's something that happened when... Our sister was minister. I got some words for somebody. You know, we have been having a very deep session today. A lot of things have been going on very deeply. But there is somebody that is having an antagonistic spirit. It's not that you are a witch or you are a wizard. But everything they are saying, somebody said they pray the witch die. Another one said they pray this one died you are revolting against it inside. What kind of church is that? Are you killing people? So it's affecting you the other way. You are not a wish. You are not a wizard. If I have a kobo, a kobo, a kobo, a kobo, a If it's there, I will know. But the fact that you don't like the way they are talking about witches and wizards are being killed and this uh, what kind of something is all this and this anointing is what can deliver you from that but that feeling is to make you think the other way so that when you think the other way you won't get help I will repeat it you know what I'm saying. So I'm not a pastor. So I'm not looking for church growth. If you want church growth, if somebody is doing something wrong, you will see keep on managing them so that their tight and offering can continue. I'm not like that. I'm not looking for what I used to eat. That's not why I'm serving God. But let me repeat the scenario so that you get it better. Because I want you to respond so I will pray for you. 
that what the devil is programming you for, <laughs> it will not happen to you. You know, we we're doing this place, ties. You remember, we we're doing ties. One young man came here and met me there. He said, when I was preaching in Ijo, I gave a word of knowledge. There is somebody here, you and your friends, you are doing this and this and this. But God wants to deliver you. So if you respond now, I'll pray for you, you will not end like them. But if not, you, God is, uh, I mean, some other things might happen to you. So I didn't know the details of the way I said it. But he said he had, but he didn't feel anything. He's not our church member. He just came with the person that we rent a sound system from. Fix his sound system. So he didn't take what I was saying serious. But he eventually now came back. But where was he coming from when he came back? Won't tell one day. Briefly. But bon la buja. To see finally. This man of God told me. And I had, but I did I didn't respond. I said, God have mercy on you. So kinum king was your wife. I'm saying that's his life was. I mean, I mean, do anybody to you. I mean, patience. Praise God. You go to life as it's. Well, I'll reach the process to my help. A lot of children. We both don't go to my. Oh, lay. Can't help you. Oh, the word then was not that you should come and sit down with me. It's to deliver you from a problem. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's the way prophetic things flow. I'm anointed against evil. I'm anointed against very deep occultic things that many of your own personal prayer and fasting can't deliver you from it, even if you are a Christian. But you need a calling that can face that kind of fire and help you destroy it. Right? So everything we're saying, and those people have been ministering today, they've been mentioning a lot of things. You see somebody minister for South Africa and he's giving his own word of knowledge about somebody that's having this and this here. So it's a clear cut anointing for everybody that come under my whatever. The young man that is ministering now, that just finished ministration, copper two years, no ilumbi. It's because of this conversation, but I saw by last watch a master's go to the man for the cool lock, by my bars of way, kill on pad, I lost a lot of the body you'd call. Okay, more fashion masters. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I don't pity people when it comes to the things of God. No, you have to be thorough. When God gives you an assignment, you must be thorough with it. Okay? So this feeling of, why are you people against that yet? To the one fact, why? That's against you. Okay, okay, why are you now against me and sorrow? And to the one who are in at it, why? No, no, one way was it? Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you're on ground or online. My father, the Lord will say, I'm not a demon chaser, but I'm back by there. I'm not a demon chaser. I'm not a demon No. I don't even have time for that. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't have time. Because it takes time to see with them. And if you keep casting that devil in your life, you can cast it. 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 I'm fulfilling destiny. But if I cross my path, you get into trouble. So this one is not that because I can be ministering. You know, mommy told you I was ministering in Lagos. It was a man of God, Molo, commissioned into ministry. What is she evangelistic ministry for years? But Koyeko, only church, only church. Moniko stopped church. Kobali says, yeah, evangelist, da, da. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it took a long time before you obey that. Because once you have people coming under you and they call you pastor, they call you this and that, you are not in there, and say, Bible, and say, Bori, and say, Bori, and So you don't like him, you don't like him. Okay? I said, well, it will cage your destiny since you are an evangelist. So I think after one or two other encounters, you have to say it to yourself simply. Say it to him, you don't have to 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 say it to him, you
But the day he called somebody to come and preach for him, and the person preached the first day, was supposed to preach for a weekend program, preached the first day, the second day, he said, Prophet. So God said, Don't preach for this man again. Carry your Bible, go. Go to the Bible, go to the church, so get out of here. Ah, you saw me. Then a member of the church was up I saw you, sir. And your pastor was up with Mori Heaven. I won't start polluting you, but I better be. So, why young man, you lay your cock on? I won't go to one best. So, I want that for Obo. I'm sorry, Pastor God Mori Muso. So, why did I saw all those things? So, you are part of me. That you like me. I said, Look, I'm not looking for all those things. I don't need any physical thing to push me. But I told you. Maybe because I'm close to you, you didn't understand what I said. So, so I said, now, all those periods that I was doing past on, I said, King Wase, come off me, no tear to down, my take care of me, that I'm in the for tear, Shakosi. No tear me, Lolo, and Nigeria. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, you tell to my friends, I'll be able to fail for me, no fair shape. In money, in between, in between, she wrong. If I come there, that means I'm supporting your wrong. I can't be there. Praise God. If you are doing something wrong, I won't come there. Because if I come there, the day you are supposed to go back and do what is right, you will remember Pastor Consul Fuen, but we went to attend what you are doing. You don't want to think you don't want to go wrong. A me meant to wrong, you have to send to right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I was preaching in Nakure here. I've been in Nakure for a long time. And I'm not a popular person in Nakure. Not because I'm not anointed, but I don't join groups. No. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? I don't join any group of Christian activity. Mm-mm. But if I want to do crusade and I need PFN, I'll go to them. If I need can, I'll go to them. But can I do? I'm not going to summon the Lord here and can I'm not going to see you do both for me too interesting. Thing. Give Bobo Akure to me as church member is failure. Because I'm not called to Akure as a town and come to the world. And the world is bigger than the population of Akure. Is somebody hearing me? So somebody might feel good teacher here back under that Akure because he sent to Akure. I'm not. What it be the day? We be too lodging. Praise God. So I've been ministering here, and then some young people, youth, because I like to when I'm doing conference like this is meant for youth. That's why I didn't publicize so much. My publicize be I can come for you and to what and they don't need what I'm saying. So. But I'd rather go to higher institutions, okay, and tell them there's a place where you can come for training and teaching and things like that that will affect your life in the future. So that's the kind of audience I want the meeting to be meant for. You see, but I've been in Akure here and I'm a minister. Young people call me as youth to come and preach in their church, and I went there to preach. As soon as I'm on the pulpit, God said, this place is dangerous. This altar is not pure. Ah. I want to leave immediately. Say, no, 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 no problem. You can preach your message. Because the young people that are here are ready to listen to what I want to do. I want to do that. 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 I want to do Ah. So I told those young men, minister to them, but I told my people, Taj John Longman, said, this altar is not that altar, not this one. That altar is not pure. And because it's not pure, I won't ever come here to preach again. I just said that, but I don't tell him, but I'm going to Then, a few years ago, in Yetikpega, but a few years ago, somebody was doing wedding, so we needed to go and do part of the wedding in a church around Awule or something. So I went there to do church, I mean, to do wedding. So I was sitting somewhere, and I saw somebody as head usher. One woman. And I know the woman in the name of the spirit, Tate Paderi. Not physical, spiritual. In the name of the spirit. So Mumoru and Tuja. It's still when they buy a bash on your head. Ah, it be serious. So I was looking for how to quickly get out of the out of the place before if they know I'm there as a man of God, they might bring me up to come and sit down with other ministers. Tell me by afford to ministers on seat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's like I'm doing a, a disfavor to my destiny in this town. So I just edge out. My wife was there with me. But because our family that was doing something, ah, this family people, I hope you all, I said no problem. My sister knows me. 
in our family, I was the first one to be born again. The first to go to university, the first to do a lot of things. When it comes to Christian things, they ask me how to go. So if I tell them, in memory, continue down there to Jack and Kurum, but you can then you have to wait for the day. I'm not going to pray for my cancer, but I'm not going to pray for my cancer. I left. She saw me as I was going. Ah, but I'm going to give it to you. 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 I just left. But few months, the other one to share it was many years. But this one was just a few months after. The pastor of that church in Aule died. Ah, sorry. She was sick. No, he went to the other church I said that day to preach as a resort. He said, I don't know what And as he was preaching, he slumped down and died. A man of God, that another man of God's altar. But that was the altar I said that day. So it means what I said that day could you change. But kilo de ti opa mi kotobe. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because of what I carry. But the person that called me faking monkey, you are stepping on something. But we share any kind. But one need that is why from a little So I didn't ever go there. Those are churches that people go to and they think they are worshiping God. So I'm not after physical thing, but I don't want bakute tan tadie ko tun lo kosi. That's why about tun wa su bi bai. So here it is to help you. But why should the message of power to deal with wishes and wizard be mentioned and you are angry inside? That's the thing I want to deal with. Stand up and let us pray. I just want you to talk to God. First, pray that God will open your eyes. Wherever evil is gaining momentum around my life, and I'm not aware, I'm so dull and so you know, nice, I don't even know what is right from what is wrong, and I'm in the midst of all these networks of evil, wickedness of the devil, and I know not. So that you don't make your enemy to become your friend. And you don't stupidly, sheepishly go and give your life away when you should be the one defending territory for God. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Maza deliko shata. Eko ziantre ile beroshi adotamana aleke zidarakas shata likrodo prelimo sonteri angra lusta barata. Brecheke luta biria nda rase taru kusubre leke diato manakaru beze zuzi yede kutubre le izo tabarash kalush kedush kadas tete maze zude yete ike zumana kuasta kabariki shetelo entoria ambrano sa ike toskili shatoreke mandre ido parate rishatendri kutandru kubaka le sente rusha ingrelo sitaroma na santeria arubra le kezuzo yeteri koparaka mande lisatwa liske torataye rusha tele peridea thank you father in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray now before we leave this morning session you want to be trained on ministry work. Maybe you perceive you have a call of God on your life. Or you know that you have, or you have even started doing some stuff for God in your own little way. But from what you are hearing, you need help. You need to be well trained. So that when you are going out, you won't just go ordinary. You will be somebody equipped for the assignment. I've said this maybe the first and second day, but I have a feeling I should make the call again today. So if you have that kind of nudging in your spirit, uh, you've had many people say many things of what God has taught them, what they were here and all that, and those that are still here. 
But then the purpose of the meeting is to also get some other new set of people that God will start training again because the future is still great. We, are, we still have a long journey to go. And there will always be young people that God wants to train to become something for him. You see, part of who that ministered yesterday was uh, a businessman. But even in the business world, you need fire. <laughs> you can't do business with Oboni and uh, <laughs> occultic people who are in white witches. And then you too, you are just a nice Christian. You can't, you can't rise from among them except you carry the fire that God is talking about. So you need this training. I'd like you to respond. I'm going to pray for you here. Then they will write down your name so that when we are ready to start training, then we can, you, you'll be recruited. Uh, that's after we have taken you to some step and find out that you qualify for it. Okay? And then if you are getting this message online and you like to respond because the training and the teaching will both be on ground and online. So you can respond also, write your names, tell us. We are interested in knowing your name and your WhatsApp number and probably your email so we can tell you when the time starts and what are the modus operandi, how is it going to operate, and then what is going to be the modus, you know. So all those are going to come out after the whole of the seven days. Then so new days will start for some people. That will determine how far they will go. But the decision is the important thing now. You have to take a decision. Do you want this or you don't want that? It's very simple. So if you want to be a part of that training, I'd like you to raise up your hand. And uh, you have not responded to that before. And you are here now. Or you are online. So you respond. I'm going to pray for you. And then your name is going to be included on the list over here. Yes, do I have anybody in the house? All right. So if you don't, no problem. If you have any online, just let us know. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for what your spirit has started to do. And we thank you for all the various teachings in diverse ways that you have brought to us. We will not just be recipients of these things for nothing, but we will be who you want us to be. And we will get ready for the training to become them in the name of Jesus. Not only for the sake of anybody, Somebody is catching anointing, and the first recipient were his own family mommy, brother, sister, everything. So, you may be in that kind of position. I pray none of us will fail our generation in the name of Jesus. You will not face, fail those who are waiting for you to manifest as a son in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we meet in the evening by 5 o'clock. God bless you.